three, two, one. Viewer beware, you're in for a scare. <laughs> that was from Goosebumps. 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 <laughs> Goosebumps. <laughs> I, w- I watch Goosebumps and eat shishi. I'm Adam from Your Movie Sex. <laughs> I'm Alex from IHE. Uh, my, my addition to the intro is just... Um, <laughs> you can probably hear that laughing in the background. We are not alone. This is a special episode. <gasps> who, who is joining us today? Uh, hi, I'm April Atmansky. And I'm Colin Cunningham. Hello. What the fuck do you do? Who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> How did you get on this podcast? How did you hack our signal? <laughs> We're hacking all the way from uh, the other side of Canada. Toronto, Canada. Damn. That's where we were a month ago. I, I can't believe that. It feels like it was two weeks ago. <laughs> I think I'm still recovering, by the way. My, yeah. yeah, same. <laughs> it feels like it was a year ago. I don't know. My, the, the way that my time flows is entirely just fucking inconsistent. I have no idea how long it's been. It's it, you could tell me it's June, twenty twenty nine, and I. It's like you're it. in the. You, it's like you're in the hypercube. It's it is as though I am in the hypercube. <laughs> that is correct. That is an apt analogy. The hypercube, definitely not the regular cube. No, 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 no. <laughs> this isn't regular cube business. Uh, so we've got. Uh, we got some people in the audience that are probably wondering uh, what what you do. What 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 sort of presence on the internet do you have? What uh, what are you known for? Well, we have our uh, own podcast. Uh, me and Colin and our friend Justin we host called No Such Thing as a Bad Movie, and uh, we have over a hundred episodes. We've been doing it for a few years now, and uh, we talk about bad movies and we talk about things that we like about them. And uh, what I do is I'm a commercial uh, video editor and colorist here in Toronto. Woo. Hell yeah. I am also on that podcast. Yes. Uh, uh, and I'm Liar. a visual effects. I, what? No. And uh, <laughs> I'm a visual effects artist in Toronto. And uh, uh, Adam, you, you both may have seen me. I've been on some uh, red letter media videos. Mm-hmm. From, from time to time, I pop down and visit Milwaukee and we shoot some stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's all. That's all I got in my life. <laughs> <laughs> what, is your, what is your favorite moment or appearance that you've done? on this, whatever this red letter media is that you call it. Yeah, it sounds niche. Uh, hmm. uh, there have been some funny moments. I think the funniest one we've done is the osteoporosis dance episode. Ooh. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> where, where Mike Mike just, yeah, he breaks me, uh, which he tends to do in his hatred for the elderly. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just lose it. That one in particular, I was, I was just dying laughing. And uh, I don't think I recovered. <laughs> so I'm I'm really curious. Do you actually think there's no such thing as a bad movie? Is this like a true principle and you're trying to <laughs> spread the word? Oof. Uh, I think a couple of movies. I think Black Devil <laughs> Doll from Hell. Uh, you're always ragging on Black Devil Doll from it's, Hell. It's I think that movie has not merit. a good movie. I think I was outright saying it in the episode that this is a terrible <laughs> movie and do not watch it. It is awful. Okay. There are a few movies that we've di- disagreed or, or just been like, no, it sucks. <laughs> um, I watched a, there was a movie called Sledgehammer that I was just like, this is terrible. It was mm-hmm. a David Pryor movie. It was you, a long time You also ago. didn't care for uh, Chairman of the Board with uh, Carrot I Top. still found things to like about it. So we, <laughs> we, we always like find something we like about it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, we've watched some of the pretty notorious bad movies. We did Master of Disguise um, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> not not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Which was which was great just for uh, hearing about that 9-11 story. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's a little exact. <laughs> Exaggerated, but uh, there is some truth to it. Like, I, I don't think it was literally they found out <laughs> no, on no. set, but they did like some sort of weird memorial or uh, pre. <laughs> yeah, we found out. Yeah, they, they, it was done after 9 mm-hmm. 11, uh, but he was wearing the, the turtle outfit and they did a little kind of moment of silence for 9 11 before going right into shooting with the turtle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm looking up some of these films. I'm looking at. I looked up Black Devil Doll from Hell. Oh yeah, I was just my looking god! At that. You got to see that. One of the stills <laughs> does remind me of like Chucky from Goosebumps, so that ties in pretty well. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. 
it's it's a very sexual movie. Yeah, if if Chucky, oh, really? yeah, if, yes, if, okay. yeah, yes, if Chucky had sex with women, uh, I think he does on screen many times. Does, does Chucky ever fuck in those uh, those movies? Because uh, if he fucks the girl, it's the girl so, doll, it just makes you so uncomfortable. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it, I, it's I'm, not bad. I want to comment just so um, the the titles that you've listed as just ones that are just irredeemable and so. It's so bad that you, you're ch- considering changing the name of your podcast, even. <laughs> uh, where do you find these films? Are they all viewer suggestions? Like, a lot of them seem really niche, and that's also, you know, Red Letter Media, Wheel of the Worst is also... A lot of these mm-hmm. things, just like, where where are these coming from? This doesn't... Mm-hmm. <laughs> does this have an IMDb page sort of thing? <laughs> well, when we first started, we just picked... We used to do two movies an episode, which we don't do anymore, but we would just pick them, and we often had a theme. Sometimes it would be like, okay, two horror movies, or like, we did two movies with like Judge in the title or something like that, but it became too hard to do two movies, so we just did one, mm-hmm. and once we did that, we just started taking turns picking, so every week another person would pick, just kind of, kind of like you guys do. Mm-hmm. And then we also have uh, on our Patreon, if you're uh, subscribed on the $2 level and up, we have like a lottery. So every Ooh. like a uh, couple months, I pick a patron and they get to pick any movie they want, uh, as long as it's available for oh, us yeah, to uh, do. On the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, not exactly. for a Patreon episode, they for the main feed. Yeah, there's no like kind of niche ones, though. I think the weird ones, uh, especially the ones that we mentioned, are all from Justin. Yeah, so he has <laughs> an insane encyclopedic knowledge of like every movie ever. He has like multiple movie podcasts. Uh, he's very knowledgeable and... Yeah, a lot of them are either like weird things that people have either suggested to him or he's found like through like lists on Letterboxd, like and it's yeah, stuff that we've never heard of. A lot of low budget streaming things too, mm-hmm. but we've yeah. found some some good discoveries that way. Yeah. Not Black Devil Doll from Hell. <laughs> well, I, hey, I mean, we're talking about it so much, you guys are going to have to review it. Uh, I, I've added it to my watch list. It seems uh, fascinating. Uh, 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 <laughs> great, great Halloween movie. Oh, uh, I'm like clawing at my legs right now. Oh, come mm. on. <laughs> so does it get a does it get exhausting to to kind of like? It seems like your conversations on your podcast are just like, let's find the most exhausting fucking possible thing that we could possibly watch. Like, does it? Do you no. do you have any? Reg- Regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have any regrets? No. Oh my goodness. Well, a lot of times, well, someone will pick a movie that they like, but they know is bad, okay. and then everyone else uh, fun, hates fun, it. Bad. You know, well, you know, yeah. like X mm. X three or something. Yeah, is a good it's example. usually the boring ones. Uh, uh, I find like even though you know, there's really nothing to talk about. We just sort of veer off and just talk about whatever. Yeah, uh, like that happens a lot. Those are honestly like the most fun episodes. And I, I find like, you know, I look at my notes that I take before recording and it's like, God, I got nothing to say about this movie. And usually <laughs> those are the most f- fun episodes to, to yeah. record because we just like shoot the shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And, and then we forget that we're supposed to be talking about the movie. And it's, it's like, like oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm about to start a competitor podcast called Always Something to Say About a Bad Movie. <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove you wrong. <laughs> uh, yes, Alex, there are bad movies. Alex, do you have any questions for our guests before we start the cubes? I found something really random that I got a beef with Colin over a little second. Okay? Hell yeah. <gasps> What? I was looking right. up. <laughs> yeah. No, I was I was just scrolling through IMDb seeing all these credits from Twilight to Hulk <laughs> or whatever and all this kind of stuff. But it was more the acting section that caught my eye. Oh right? yeah. Two thousand and six is the wild. You're credited for a character and I found this video on YouTube, right? If you're doing this like British <laughs> yeah, accent. Yeah. <laughs> what right. what is the story behind this oh, man? You no. gotta tell me. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's available on Disney Plus if you ever want to see it. The movie, not, yeah, the not movie. That weird video. <laughs> that was a DV. Okay, so I was I worked on the movie. I was a, a lighting artist, and uh, the director Spaz Williams, Steve Williams. He worked at ILM. He was the guy who did like the Tyrannosaurus Rex for Jurassic Park. He did T one thousand. This was his directorial debut, and so he came to Toronto where, where I worked, and uh, he would just get me for doing temp voices. So they would be constantly uh, working on the script. Uh, they would have the storyboards. And then he just sort of came down one day and he's like, who can do voices? Like, all right, Colin, like, come upstairs. Like, or, or, you know, you do William Shatner, you know, for this line and blah, blah, blah. And then do <laughs> this and that. So they were supposed to get, uh, I think I could probably say it. They were trying to uh, get yeah. Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols, John Lydon. Uh, so... Uh. This was me doing a stand-in voice uh, for him 
uh, just give, not even like knowing what he really sounded like, but uh, and then that fell through, and then the director ended up just thinking I was kind of funnier anyway, and just wanted to keep me in. So, so there you go. Uh, yeah. So that movie should interest you, Alex, because it's like the Bizarro Madagascar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you seen it, Alex? I haven't seen this one. No, I've always seen that poster, no, seen but uh, yeah. Same. It's weird. Cause it's like a big Disney production, right? But it's only got like twenty-seven k ratings and stuff and i guess madagascar took its thunder or something yeah it was supposed to come out i think the year before madagascar and then production got <laughs> Oops. and they were based on the same script right yeah similar idea so Dance they were trying to thing. exactly yeah, yeah. Mm. so that's dreamworks mo pretty much so uh yeah we were gonna kind of beat them to the punch and then our production just got you know fell behind as it happens and then they came oh, ended up coming out a year before us so by the time that movie came out, it was known as the Madagascar ripoff. So well, you if you had all of your character designs to be like blocky cube lion <laughs> instead of real regular lion, then you probably would have went out faster. Yeah, exactly. You had exactly. to get that realistic looking fur. Yeah, I know. The fur um, But if you, if you want to know more about the wild, uh, we did a, an entire syncable commentary track on it on our Patreon uh, oh, for, awesome. our, for our podcast. Um, so <laughs> check that out if you want to know more about it. Which is weird. I didn't even think it came out on Blu-ray, but it, it's in HD on, on Disney+. Plus. But... Uh, yeah, I think they just released a few DVDs. So that little thing on YouTube, Alex, is mm. uh, one of the, I think, the only DVD extra that came <laughs> on the DVD. <laughs> That's just funny. you. Yeah. And by the way, he's only in one scene in the movie. Yeah, it's a very it's, it's short a character, scene, yeah. but pretty funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> my birthday is on the poster. It says, hitting the streets April 14th. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Damn. <laughs> That's what that's what happened to you. You came. You hit, hit the, streets. the streets. I became wild and hit. The, <laughs> <laughs> the tagline: "Start spreading the newspaper." Oh God! <laughs> is that oh, God. is that the tagline? Yeah, I mean that's, that's what it terrible. says on the poster on IMDb. And they have New York. They're only in New York for like one scene, I think. Oh yeah, it's a real uh, <laughs> Jason Eight. Exactly. Really, yeah. Friday yeah, the Thirteenth Part Eight. It's true. That's very uh, funny. Uh, anything else, Alex? Before we give, give me throw out a couple of episodes of your podcast you'd recommend as good, uh, particularly good episodes. People seem to like the Jingle All the Way episode <laughs> that did a lot. Mortal Kombat Annihilation did pretty big numbers. Um, the Grinch. It's two Christmas episodes oh, for what for whatever the, reason. The Grinch. We just sounded miserable on. <laughs> well, because we were just so angry. We all hated the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's fitting. It's thematic. <laughs> But I remember my friend listened to the Grinch episode and said, like, it sounded like we had all had a fight before we started recording <laughs> <laughs> because we were so. <laughs> he could sense some tension. It's just we all hated the movie so much. Yeah, it's like some of them. I mean, some it's, it depends when we record. So now we record like in the morning, usually like when we're recording right now in the afternoon. But sometimes if we record in the evening and you know, we've had a couple beers, it can get a little rowdy. I get, I get very cranky when I come home from work and have to record. So <laughs> I'm usually in a bad mood. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we record yeah, early. When we now. switch to mornings. Delightful. Everything is 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 great. How so? I was actually thinking about revisiting Jingle All the Way at some point doing like a watch along or something on my stream is it like i have i have nostalgia for it it does it hold up yes, not so. necessarily like in a like well uh, it's good i never watched it as a kid but uh i kind of saw it a little bit and we were like oh it's terrible but when we did it for the podcast we were like actually it's it's kind of funny it's i, I actually i actually yeah. have a new i have a new appreciation for it I it's it's funny that like everyone in it is is just so awful as a person <laughs> and, and you, you just like despise everybody in this film so in that respect it's it's you know it's a good time yeah and i mean sin sinbad is is a, yeah. quite a quite a large yeah. personality you get to in like so many jokes like haven't aged well you know sinbad threatening oh. to blow up like the radio station yeah. <laughs> i definitely think it would make a fun like a funny like stream or like a like mm. adam and pals video or something okay yeah. Yeah, jamie, I was about it. <laughs> jamie. Uh, alex we should try to remember that for uh, christmas maybe Mm, yeah good suggestion i haven't seen that since i was a kid crazy Same. from from memory even yeah it was like one of my favorite movies as a kid <laughs> uh, nice. uh, great recommend for christmas uh, if you're looking to do something really good a black devil doll from hell is that yeah. a christmas movie <laughs> <laughs> no no i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> okay well uh all right we're going to talk about the cubes 
We're going to talk oh about God. all the cubes. We're going to slice them and dice them. This is a Halloween mm. episode. Also, our 150th episode, by the way, of the podcast. Congratulations, um, Congratulations. guys. True, yeah. We're recording this a little bit early. Still in October. Uh, but uh, the episode should be public like on the 30th. So like right before oh, Halloween. Wow. So it's uh, it all makes sense. The stars aligned. It all came together. The and, cubes uh, aligned. Doing uh, yeah, <laughs> doing the you know the most Canadian movies. I feel like I have to to stand up for the national anthem. Well, except for the remake. Oh, <laughs> but that, the that's the most three. Japanese movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the previous three couldn't be more Canadian if they tried. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that's just a normal Japanese game show. Is like, the <laughs> oh yeah, that that was a life in prizes. <laughs> Nasubi was in it. Yeah, do you want to? So, Colin, you. You begged us to do Cube. You said, I will not do any <laughs> film that's not Cube. <laughs> I think that was April. That was that was me. Was April, it you? I have to, yeah. yeah. She is obsessed with this movie. Colin, you were the one that you said you like had a hand in it when it came I ha- out, I have, right? a con- I have a connection to this film, so okay. I don't know if we keep okay, talking about why that I now, or should you. I? Right. Sure. Yeah, please. Yeah, tell, tell us why we're cubing. Time. Okay, so I'm a VFX artist, like I said, and yeah, the place that did the wild was Core Digital Pictures. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was William Shatner's effects company in Toronto. And the owner, uh, say, so filmmaker Norman Jewison, who did uh, Fiddler on the Roof, he did Jesus Christ Superstar, In the Heat of the Night. He's got uh, a film school in Canada. Oh, he did Moonstruck as well. He's got a film school in Canada called the Canadian Film Center. Uh, and they have like a I don't know if it's like a couple years or a three year long program or something like that. And um, the owner of Core was on the board of directors. And I think at the end of the program, all the director students pitch an idea and then the film center picks one to make into a feature film. And then they get a lot of people to sort of donate their time. So they get like professional crews kind of volunteering and stuff like that. And then uh, Core was offering uh, free effects. So Vincenzo uh, got this made and then Core did all the effects in the movie for free. So I didn't personally work on it, but I was there at the time. Um, and then a couple of my friends did most of the effects that you see on screen as, as a favor. And I think I read that this was the first film that the Canadian Film Center yep. produced. Mm-hmm. And wow. I think they do it every year now. And uh, from then on, I think Vincenzo became really good friends with Core. And uh, I think they did all of his movies up to Splice, I think. Yeah, they continued to work together. So This was the first film made in Canada ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> That's right. We didn't, ha- we didn't have movies before Cube. Yeah, that's it. We just we only had two D animation and we called it Square. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now, now it's in three dimensions. Yeah. Uh, as soon as we great. as soon as we invented the third dimension and color, <laughs> that was it. Yeah. <laughs> color pretty important <laughs> in this movie, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So this is a uh, I, I watched this when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Alex, is this your first experience with Cube, or did, have you seen it before? No, I watched Cube. I was quite a fan of this movie when I was younger. I've seen mm-hmm. it a couple of times, but I haven't seen uh, the rest of them before. So that was a new experience <laughs> yeah. for me. But yeah, we'll get to those. We'll we get will. to those in we due shall. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess uh, anybody listening, you probably should have watched the movie already, but uh, we'll give a little brief synopsis. Basically, uh, people wake up, they're in a Cube. <laughs> they say, get me out of here. I didn't do anything. And they try to get out of there. Will they get out before the end of the movie? I don't know. There's traps. There's drama. There's math. What more could you want? That's basically the whole movie. That's it's, all I yeah, need. Yeah, it's literally everything you need. <laughs> yeah, I'm sold. It's actually kind of surprising because this is a very, you know, it's a low budget film. Mm-hmm. And I guess one of the little tidbits about the filmmaking and the practicality of it is is they repurposed the same room over and over and over and mm-hmm. just had different lights behind the panels, basically. But yes. at no point during the film as you're watching it does it feel like, oh, it's just the same room. There's there's a very clear sense of continuity in space, and it's it's cheated well enough that it's never not convincing in that sense. 
I agree. They had a they had one like one and a half or one and a third of a, yep. of the cube. So they had like so when you're looking through the hatch, there's another wall over there because we're trying to figure out like okay, was that an effect? No, because they couldn't afford an effect like that. Mm-hmm. No. Um, so they had another wall there, and like when they're shooting, they're just trying to use as much of the space as possible. So they're like right to the edge of where, you know, like the fourth wall would be. So if they moved like an inch, you would see the set mm-hmm. <laughs> basically. Mm-hmm. But when you're watching it, I, I never think about that. I feel like you're, I'm in this big structure. Right? Yeah, they did it. It's, it's very cleverly planned. You know, it's, oh, yeah. it, it does the absolute most, I think, with what they had. Yeah. And you never feel like, yeah, the location's getting boring because they kind of change it up. But yeah, as far as the lights even go, it's, even like, though it's just color, yeah, like so they actually originally planned to shoot it in sequence, which is a very like first time filmmaker idea. <laughs> yeah, because um, I was like, oh, it, it's so great seeing how these characters kind of grow and change. But like, he was he thought that <laughs> how long is it going to take to change the gels? And it was like it, it takes like at least an hour, and then it would take even more. Yeah. So like we can't mm. do that. So we have to shoot all the red room stuff first and all the white room stuff in another day. And like that makes it harder on the actors. But I mm-hmm. I, I think they all did a fantastic job. They didn't have the uh, the light panels that you could just like they do now. Yeah. Like the LEDs, or you can just change mm. the color like it, after the yeah, fact. They like, from your fucking telephone. Yeah, <laughs> it's ins- yeah, it's insane. Which I think the the Japanese one did, but um, yeah, for yeah. this one, I think they had to like manually change all the gels. It was gels on all Damn. six sides. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, and then yeah. the actors were like complaining that it was so hot in there because you're essentially in a light box. Yeah. Damn it, that sucks. Didn't even think about the heat. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It has a great sense of continuity despite that. And so, shout out, you know, props to the script supervising and, and all that, but. Also, mm-hmm. the makeup, because you can tell yeah. over the course of the film, their lips are getting more chapped. The implication is they're getting more dehydrated. Yeah, getting sweaty. Mm-hmm. And also the acting, like it does, you know, it's not the best acting. I do have some criticisms with the acting, <laughs> but it doesn't feel like it's shot out of order. That's one thing that, mm-hmm. you know, the, the continuity of the film is is actually really well done. And that's kind yeah. of impressive. There's a real uh, scrappiness to it. You know, and especially when you look up, like we we said, low budget, but uh, three hundred sixty five thousand Canadian. Mm-hmm. That, that's pretty crazy. Wow, you're never really thinking amazing. about that. Yeah, yeah, that's really impressive to me. And it was that production design that was carrying it, because uh, for sure. Yeah, as Adam, as Adam kind of pointed to, there's uh, there's some funny acting, which is part of the charm to me. There's like a cor- <laughs> corniness to some some of these some of the lines, <laughs> performances, and some of the some deliveries, of the lines, some of the delivery. Yeah. There's some like kind of aged concepts that yeah, I don't know if we'd really be playing with in the same way now. Yeah, but I like this one. I, I, I was I was quite a fan of this coming back to it and uh, yeah, it's got, in the cube. It's got a, it's got a, a, a really good concept, and I think I liked it better this time. I've only seen it once before when it in the theaters when it when it came out. Um, I that think it freak. only played very briefly in Canada. I think it was a huge bomb here. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it, well, it was worldwide yeah. released, but I, you know the gross is like, well, like according to IMDb is like under a million. I think in Japan it made a lot of money, and uh, but in Canada it made nothing. So I think I caught it on the first weekend because it was probably gone. Well, by it, the second it did. Weekend. It did premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival, oh, okay. and it won like the best new filmmaker or new director award. Oh, cool! Just want to point that out. First Canadian film is what it won. First yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever made. They had to create the award just for it that by the whole festival. Yeah. The award has existed for a long time, but this was the first one. <laughs> so what I heard is that someone, like a distributor from France, uh, saw the film in Canada and saw its potential and then gave it a French release where it did uh, fairly successfully and then uh, wound up you know, the, the success in France wound up propelling it to other countries as well. But for whatever reason, it just appeared in Canada. They just gave it, gave up on it. Um, but, uh, you know, a, another part of film making and making a film successful, especially in 1997, is the marketing. And what they wound up doing for the French release is they put money into advertising. They let people know that it exists. Oh, my which God. Which is a big thing. And people just forget <laughs> that, <laughs> you know, even thought? if you have Imagine the best that. fucking movie ever, if nobody knows that you can watch it in a theater and you can watch it anywhere, like people are going to see it. So good reminder for everybody it's it's crazy it's like netflix if it came out of netflix you'd never even know it was on netflix it'd be buried somewhere like Mm -hmm. yeah original (laughs) it would uh it would get i'm thinking of ending things and no push for oscars Mm -hmm. and then the academy doesn't even know that movie got released (laughs) it's like okay (laughs) (laughs) yeah so i mean this was my first time revisiting it um and i think i liked it a lot better this time and i think i 
especially after watching the sequels, I appreciated it a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You really, you really figure out like what it gets right <laughs> when you, when you it, watch oh, exactly. all the sequels yeah. in totality, you know? Yeah. Like even just simple things like the using those colors, not only just to keep things varied or kind of trick the view into thinking that the room is changing, but like, you know, mm -hmm. linking it. So when the, when it's red, they have more of an argument and using the blue for when they're problem solving. And yeah, yeah there's, there's some smart ideas going on. Um, mm -hmm. And just, yeah. Going back to that scrappiness, I, another fun thing. It, in ways, it almost feels like a proto saw to me. You know, it's yes. not really like yeah, solving. Yeah, totally. It's not really like they're not given the the framing of like the serial killer making them solve traps or whatever. But that whole like bottle movie problem solving element and the gore, of course, like the the opening kill with the, the like cheese wire cutting people up, and it's all it's all fun and how they they achieve that stuff. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm waiting for. That's really done well, that opening. Uh, oh, it's yes. fantastic. I mean, mm. I, I, it's, it kind of shocked me how well it held up, and it's probably one of the better ones that I've seen. 100%. Uh, like. Well, they did have practical effects that were also, um, like, I forget the name of the studio, Caligari. They uh, they had to, they, they accepted payment just for the materials, but they did all the labor for free. So mm -hmm. that was also, like, kind of like, like do film. donating their, yeah. and, like, uh uh, yeah, like that opening, the opening sequence is, it really kind of gets you in the space of the movie. And it's like, okay, it's really, really gruesome. But like later on, there's another death, pretty good death by trap. But everyone else who dies is, is not not killed by a trap. True. It's all the dynamic of the people. Mm. And they end up murdering each mm. other. And that, that actor, Julian Richings. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a joke about him that he's uh, in every <laughs> Canadian movie yeah. because he practically is. Yeah, we see him oh, really? from time to time walking yeah. around Toronto. He just has the most unique look. It's mm -hmm. like his face is so interesting to look at. And uh, yeah, he's in every like Canadian TV show and, and movie you can imagine. <laughs> he always pops up. He was in Bo is Afraid. Was he? Uh, yeah. He has a credit. <laughs> God, he got 228 credits. He's a busy man. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like in everything. Oh, yeah. And he was in... Um, so Vincenzo Natale did... Um, an episode of Cabinet of Curiosities. That's yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Or, mm. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Guillermo del Toro's. Fantastic show. And he's with uh, David Hewlett. <laughs> yeah, David Hewlett, who mm -hmm. I, uh, I absolutely love. But I got the chance to see this movie in a theater for the 20th anniversary. Uh, they were doing a screening of it in Toronto. And uh, that was great. Uh, so some of the actors were there. Julian Richard, Richings, Richardings mm -hmm. was there. <laughs> Maurice DeWint. Um, uh, the lady played Holloway. Mark Corvin, who did the score, was there. Some of the production people, so they talked a little bit about it. Vincenzo did like a phone in, like a Zoom oh, pre recorded really? <laughs> thing. Um, but it was wonderful to see it, uh, it with an audience because obviously I'd never seen it with an audience before. And the thing that really stood out to me was the gore. I, at that point, I hadn't seen it in about mm. 10 years, but I kind of forgot how violent it can be. And people were like, oh, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> so that was pretty neat. I think this movie. Even though, you know, most people don't get killed by the traps and there's moments of gore, they're done so effectively and they're done at the right points in the story. There's a reason why there is a trope for the opening kill. It's so that it sets yeah. up the stakes, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. if you know what the movie is willing to do to its characters and if you know in how convincingly of a way or how interesting of a way or how terrifyingly of a way uh, that it's going to present it, then that gives you enough information to be scared for the next characters or to know that, oh, death is on the table here. This isn't like yeah. a fucking PG movie. Uh, these characters could die. And it, it helps imagine the stakes and imagine the world that you're supposed to be involved in. Mm -hmm. And even if that next kill doesn't happen for a while, it's yes. kind of like uh, that tension is sort of hanging over <laughs> everything. We need to feel as scared as the characters feel. Yeah, and I exactly. think that's what is so one of the things that's so great about this movie is it kind of puts you in like their mindset. Like, what if you were in this cube? You know, what mm -hmm. would you do? And seeing them slowly kind of figure out you know, these things about themselves and these numbers and, you know, trying to figure out the puzzle that is that is the cube. It's fun to kind of try and figure it out with them and you kind of feel like you're along for the ride. That's mm -hmm. that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. And like you said, the Saw movies, but it's kind of like the same thing with like the original. They kind of like wake up, you know, Get not knowing where they are mm -hmm. or how they got there. Uh, <laughs> so you're kind of like... Yeah, themselves. you're kind of like thrown into the situation with these characters and, you know, you're kind of figuring it out. Well, like talking about the characters, I think the 
the greatest strength of this movie is the dynamic um, yes. between mm-hmm. the characters. I just love how how diverse they are. They all look very different, and they all have kind mm-hmm. of these very different viewpoints. Um, not the case necessarily with the later movies, but we'll but we'll, we'll get we'll get to, we'll get to that. But mm-hmm. I love how you know. I, I think that yes, there are some cheesy lines, but I yes. think it is a really great script. <laughs> and I think that I, well, the character work is like everybody kind of you see them kind of as one thing, and then they slowly kind of reveal themselves to be something else. You think that Levin is just a you know help us little girl and she ends up being like the smartest one there and she's like super key to getting them out obviously uh quentin <laughs> he has these you know the cop, grand yeah. ideas the, of himself the cop, yeah. great depiction of a cop in media way way <laughs> way ahead of his, of, of his time and I wasn't say. holloway like a, a conspiracy nut yeah as well? so she's like a doctor but it's, she kind of it seems like a yeah a, kind of a bit of a nut but then mm-hmm. she ends up she ends up being you know the most kind of compassionate one yes. when they end up meeting kazan and she uh her just like uh care caregiving you know nature just takes over and she's like you know we're still human it's it's all we have left Mm -hmm. like we have to look out for each other and yeah like quentin reveals himself to be psychopath Mm -hmm. basically you know he has issues (laughs) (laughs) he's got a few issues what what i find fascinating is that in a film with some questionable performances (laughs) <laughs> Kazan didn't feel not handled properly. Kazan, like that, that's, I agree. that's such a thing where in so many other movies, it's like, oh, what are you doing? Or like, what's going on? Like, you know, you, you don't handle it properly and it feels like kind of offensive or disrespectful. But this is yeah. one movie where it's like, oh, okay, no, this is like a, you know, empathetic character. It's not, it doesn't seem like a mocking performance. It seems like a perfectly fine. The fact yeah. he's the like one survivor by the end of it too. Yeah. It's like kind of a fun mm-hmm. way kinda to like it Kind of like he's like, he's like the most innocent of them all. So he gets yeah. out. But, you know, that actor did do research uh, with, you know, people who have autism before the movie. And mm. you, I think you can tell for sure. But yeah. something that they said on the commentary track, which I, I was able to listen to the other day, nice. was that it's nice that this is, a, you know, a character character with autism it's not a movie about that it's mm-hmm. just this character happens to to have you know the different a different mental disability right yeah it's and then like, mm-hmm. hands up you know mm-hmm. being a savant right mm-hmm. yeah which is good i was getting a little worried when he started kind of uh kind of screaming i guess like he he the red rooms that he doesn't like or sensory like that. overload <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and I was like, "Oh no, no, no! Is this what this is turning into now?" <laughs> and yeah, thankfully it didn't. It didn't become that. So yeah, he was just one of the characters. Uh, but it, yeah, and he kind of added that level of tension, like when they go into that room where he can't make a sound. Which oh, is, that scene is so good. It's really, really <laughs> that is good. a memorable scene. It's fun. That's, yeah, that might be the best scene in the movie. For Probably me. yeah. Like the tension actually really works well. Um, yeah, they balance yeah, it very it, well. You're just sort of on edge, like, oh my god, something's going to happen. And uh, yeah, and know. like, yeah. Speaking of which, I think the sound design in this movie is like super key to it being successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, especially together, yeah. yeah, like the sound of the door opening. Yeah. Like, obviously, that's all manufactured. They had issues with the doors shooting. Apparently, they kept breaking, so then they had to keep shooting scenes that don't involve doors opening at all. <laughs> and like, they only got them really like to close by themselves on like the second last day of the shoot or something. <laughs> like that. Uh, you all know like disasters that, cheap, that happen on a low budget film it's that cheap canadian labor <laughs> exactly <laughs> volunteers but yeah like the spike room i love like the sound of it just like jutting out and yeah. then like as it like mm-hmm. goes in it has almost like a synthy like sci-fi sound to it it's almost mm-hmm. kind of beautiful and also the score is great mark corvin great composer he did the witch and um oh. many other things i can't think of right now but he's really good and he uh, really fought Vincenzo to get any kind of melody at all in, in <laughs> the music. And there really is like that kind of one song that plays a couple times, but otherwise the score is very atmospheric and minimal. And I think that works. Yeah, it feels like it's kind of like a, like a Lynchian like soundscape yeah. kind of thing. It just like a, yeah, it just sort of, I don't know. You don't really necessarily notice it. It just adds it a just little fills bit you with dread, of extra, kind of like, yeah, dread. Ugh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I love that song. I think it's great. (laughs) I like it. it. Uh, Yeah, some good dialogue in this film. I I do like. um, There are some you know fun kind of quippy lines, (laughs) like a guy going like, "Suck on it." Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> keeps the saliva flowing. Like that's a good little uh, mini, yeah, reveal or whatever we want to call it. The expectations being subverted just 
with the dialogue. Also, some words that might sound very confusing to people who are not Canadians. Uh, yes. Uh, Saskatoon. <laughs> they mentioned Saskatoon. Mm. <laughs> and the characters will just uh, randomly speak, fr- throw French words in there. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so Canadian. Also, very Canadian. mispronouncing French words, even more Canadian. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> where where Roth's like, I wasn't exactly bursting with joie de vivre before, <laughs> before this. And they're calling Ren, Renz. And yeah. Yeah. I love how Levin says to Quinn, she's explaining some math thing, and she just goes, bonjour. Like, you know, like, hello, right? Like a valley girl thing. But she just says it in French, which, by the way, I've never met anyone who said that. But no. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're trying to pretend that they're American. So they're pronouncing it badly. You see, these are totally not Canadian actors, April. This is what happens when you give Canadians carte blanche to do whatever yeah, they want. Right. Uh, Saskatoon is a city in Saskatchewan, uh, by the way. It's not great. There's nothing there oh, except, okay. which is a province in canada yes mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah just a lot of flat land some of my relatives <laughs> no the, you have relatives in saskatoon yeah oh. that's why i've been there and i can say it's not good oh <laughs> mm. they say uh there's a line where they're like talking about the coordinates they're like Negative one and zero on Z. <laughs> Z. 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 Yeah. Z. Some British in there. Nice. Well, Canadian Canadian Z is Z. So it, it is British. We use British stuff some selectively. Oh, okay. We I are in this Zed weird. Was uh, that in Britain? Yes. I didn't even. Th- yeah, I didn't even notice. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> we we have little bits of other people's cultures, and we just don't commit. In one direction yeah, or the either other. Way. <laughs> <laughs> when I do say that uh, down in the states, I get some looks like, "Yeah, I'm like what?" <laughs> you could call our country a bit of a hypercube in that. Sense. <laughs> you could, oh, no. yeah. That's that's what I would call it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I pretty much. I I think I've said pretty much all I want to say about this movie. Other than, as <laughs> someone who gets a little bogged down in the details sometimes, and I really want to understand things. They present mm. the uh, mathematical element and they say it and they're all, you know, in the context of the film, it's all very convincing in terms of the characters realizing things and there is a sense yes. of discovery. <laughs> um, but I, I was so confused about it in the sense of uh, like, okay, you're you're saying these conclusions that you came to, but I, I really don't know how you came to that. Like <laughs> when the cubes are back in the original rotation, is not really something that was ever explained in terms of why they would know that, I think. (laughs) I'm guessing it's it's because there was like three groups of numbers. So like all the numbers are like, there's like three digit numbers and there's three groups of them. So I guess they just deduce that those are the three positions. There's only a certain number of... uh, uh what would you say, like arrangements of cubes? Yeah, well, I, again, commentary, <laughs> Vincenzo, because he's like calling out things that he doesn't like about the movie, and he's mm-hmm. like, they should have ran into more empty spaces. That would uh, that would have made a lot more sense. Because mm-hmm. if there's like... Uh, s- yeah, because if they're shifting millions, around that much, yeah. there would be empty spaces, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. He's, he's like on his own commentary calling out his film. Of course. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this full, sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, you wrote it, man. Yeah, well, I mean, they did. Uh, they consulted a mathematician, obviously, to help create yeah. mm-hmm. uh, the puzzles and the discovery and all <laughs> that. And it's interesting, and I like how it's described. And I like the the whole like, okay, there's like, what was it, seventy thousand <laughs> cubes, maybe, or yeah, at least configurations. I, I think it was twenty six thousand, something like that. Yeah, something seven hundred and thirty two. There's, there's some sort of fan wiki page that kind of goes into the math. <laughs> And I've seen not only what's on the wiki, but also the comments underneath it. And I feel a bit closer to understanding what the hell's going on. But I just, yeah, I'm not really, it's, didn't fully grasp it. I would like to understand it more. You took math in school? Because I I dropped that as soon as I could. (laughs) I, I, I was pretty good at math, but I would need a refresher in terms of, uh, just getting back into the, yeah, (laughs) to get my cube license back. (laughs) <laughs> to get back into the hypercube class because you don't use it for fucking 20 years because it's like <laughs> come it's, on it's just it's, it's one of those things they it's one of those things in the movies that you kind of just have to trust that, that you know whoever's making science. it yeah, yeah whatever mm-hmm. so it's, it's like when they say you know uh 
what was that? The core. Remember that movie, The Core, when they said, you know, we, mm-hmm. we consulted with real scientists. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, everything in this movie could happen, and it was like the most ridiculous. Well, they stuff. had like the million like degree heat on the other side of the door. Yes. Or, yeah. <laughs> it was like nothing in that movie could happen. I am not a scientist, and I know that. Mm-hmm. Remember in the movie Frozen, Adam Green, they, he said everything was real. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Meaning that everything in everything in front of the camera was real. They all got ate by dogs. <laughs> but uh, speaking of understanding what's going on, that's one of the things I really appreciate about this movie is it knows where to draw the line with the mystery element. True. They throw yeah. the characters are arguing with mm-hmm. each other, throwing out theories of like, what is this cube? Is it a government thing? Is it an alien? What's going on? Um, and then they never feel the need to like drop the exposition dumps that we get in the, some of these sequels and some of these ridiculous explanations oh. that kind of ruin the whole mystery yeah. but yeah it becomes get, too explicit like we you don't know, they, need yeah. to know and anything they could have shown outside it would just be disappointing mm-hmm. uh, exactly. a la the sequels <laughs> <Yeah>. but like <laughs> you it's know. not like they're lacking like tension or conflict because that's what mm-hmm. that's really what carries it for me is that kind of villainous character of quentin he is so much mm-hmm. fun to yeah. watch his facial expressions like alone, <laughs> like <laughs> oh my god keep like, it together Crazy he is an awesome like uh, villainous force uh, yeah so you don't even need to explain it but it could easily devolve into just one of those movies. And it's like a pet peeve of mine where uh, it's just a bunch of people yelling at one another mm-hmm. for, you know, an hour and a half. And it's just so grating to watch those types of movies. But it kind of rides that line where it's like, okay, you know, it's, 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 it's not too much. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Everybody has their own distinct personalities. It's not just a bunch of people like, and like yelling the, yeah, at one the another. Worth character, he's like mentions that he was contracted and that, that little mm-hmm. twist of him, like mm-hmm, yeah. he's involved somehow, but it's still never really properly explained exactly how, and he doesn't really know all the answers. So it's, yeah, they keep it just the right level. Yeah. Like he gives an explanation to what he thinks, but we really don't know if that is the mm-hmm. whole truth. He's like, I looked and I could, from what I could tell, nobody is in charge. And, you know, if that's your interpretation of it, I think that's much scarier than yeah. what, what conspiracy theorists think is there's always either like one person or like this like elite group on top who's mm-hmm. pulling all these strings. Cabal. The idea you know that, that who. this could just happen. <laughs> 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 you know. This could just happen and it could be built and then they just decide to just put people in it because uh, because it's there, essentially. Like yeah. that's scary. And I, yeah, not to get too far deep into it, but if you look at it like for a, you know a metaphor for life, we're all just dropped into this world. We don't True. know how. Yeah. We don't know why we're here, and like who is in charge. We want to think that somebody is you know controlling things or does things for a purpose or for a reason. That could be God, say, but you know we don't really know and we never will know so we have to just keep our heads down and look at what is in front of us and the other thing i just want to say i really love about this is like it it, you think that it's just random people but then you find out they all have a skill that's necessary to escaping yes and that's just Mm. like wow finding that is so it's fun because you're like okay so they're it they all do have a purpose Mm -hmm. you know They, they have a function they have a they all have a skill what would we give this film out of 10 Oh, Ooh. 10 out of 10. <laughs> As I say, I, I saw this in high school. I was shown it in a, a media class. I became obsessed with it. I went one summer, I watched it uh, every few days. Uh, so I, wow. I, have a, I have a long history you with sh- this movie. You should see our place. It's just like April's. <laughs> we just live like, in a cube. Yeah, she's yeah. like <laughs> scribbling. <laughs> You've got that greebling all over the walls. Yeah. yeah, the walls are just covered with like numbers and equations and stuff like that. <laughs> also, just one, I just wanted to point out, we kind of talked about it, but the design on the wall of the cube yeah. is so mm-hmm. cool. And they never do that again in the sequels. Yeah, and some reason. Yeah. Like, apparently, oh. the, the attention to detail, like, it's like art, right? It's beautiful. And then apparently, like, Levin's glasses, when they broke, they actually broke that in a certain way to kind of mirror the look of the panels on the wall. Oh. Um, uh, yeah. Also, I just want to ask you guys, have you seen uh, any other of Vincenzo Natale's movies? And I saw Splice. Did you like them? <laughs> I like Splice, but Splice yeah, is... Yeah, I've seen Splice. <laughs> pretty, I, I've seen he's, he's done a lot of TV, right? Like, uh, I like yeah. Hannibal a lot. He's done like six episodes of that, I think. Yeah, and... Uh, In the Tall Grass came out uh, not too long ago. That's it's right. kind of a Cube-esque movie. It's but based on Stephen King, right? Yeah. Is it a Stephen Cube-type and... film? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it is. But people get lost in Tall Grass and they can't find it's each other and they can't, they can't get out. Um, That's cool. 
something kind of neat about that movie is it kind of recreates a move uh, a moment from Cube where Quentin is holding Holloway up and he something in his head just snaps and he goes I'm going to just going to drop you and and he does oh. and that exact oh. moment happens in with the mm. characters in, in the tall grass and I was like well, I got that reference I don't know if anyone else got that Oh you know what's you know what's <laughs> yeah. cool is is him letting the doctor go Oh, to cause yeah. death, but then when Quentin dies, it's because they didn't let him go. He gets crushed. Oh, so yeah, he's held him leg. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, op- the other way. Yeah, there were some callbacks. Yeah, in, in the- <laughs> I remember the uh, the artists working on all this stuff, so I had no context for it. I hadn't seen the movie, so they would just be working on all the traps and stuff. And then I saw that cube kind of smearing mm-hmm. smearing him across the <laughs> the the wall. It was really cool. So kind of seeing it. In the theater, is like, oh, okay, that's what it's from, blah, blah, blah. What would you give it out of 10? Uh, I would say on rewatching it, uh, I would give it a good seven. Seven. Mm, nice. It's it, it's a solid, you know, it, it, for, for what it had to work with, I think it does everything right. Uh, and, and really kind of like, you know, uses all those re- resources. Yeah. This would be, I'm just like a tad under that. <laughs> um, I do appreciate that scrappiness of it. I do love that about it. This will be like a very high kind of six out of ten, three star for me. Um, it's just there's just too much about it that uh, <laughs> like the silliness levels. I love it for <laughs> it, but it it does hold it back in certain ways for me. And mm-hmm. I do love when he gets smeared across the wall at the end, uh, the Quentin <laughs> character. But it's also one of the moments I really wish they could have. I don't know somehow built something to display because he is kind of like the villain of the movie, and I would have loved to have seen his end kind of match like the the opening scene in terms of that those practical yeah, effects yeah. and they they had a stuff. fake leg and that was all because that's like in the cube after after he gets smeared yeah, and that's yeah. that's all they had, that's all they had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah there's some age stuff about it but yeah yeah even from this conversation just thinking about the the distinctness of all these it's only like six characters but they all are all very memorable they've all got their their different quirks i like the the dialogue that comes from their banter and the tension that comes from it and yeah, it's a clever little movie. I do like it a lot. And I'm giving this one a very high 5 out of 10. I'm a monster. Let's move on. You cube 2 <laughs> hypercube. I liked it. I liked it a lot. My rating system, everybody listening knows. Well, we all know what that's like. We all know what I'm like. I'm a monster. <laughs> I'm not offended. It's okay. I figured I would like it a lot more than you guys, mm-hmm. but it sounds like you did like it. So I did like it. It's good. <laughs> I, did a, I did like a watch along stream to it. And it was the oh, most nice. I enjoyed a cube film. Well, if you're uh, <laughs> if you're starting at five, you know I can only guess at what you're going to give the next ones. Yes, <laughs> uh, this one has the best title, though. You got to give it that. I can't like Come believe on. you would call something hypercube. <laughs> is the is the squ- is the cube awesome. two like it's like squared like cube squared? It is. Like yeah, at the top I think so. Of the- Stylistically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cube two colon hypercube <laughs> yeah just called it hypercube i have another connection to this movie Uh-oh. yes not not oh. only that it was we have shot a connection. in toronto you have a connection did you to direct all of these it? movies did you direct i did not <laughs> yeah under a pseudonym uh, which i cannot pronounce <laughs> so I, I mentioned that i was at core who did the effects for the first movie so when i i left core and i went to a company called toy box in toronto it was another visual effects my boss's name was dennis berardi and soon after I started there, he quit and started his own company called Mr. X. And Mr. <laughs> X, this was their very first job uh, after they split off and, and formed a company. And they eventually became producers on the third one. So there you go. So I know all the people in the credits did the, the, did the visual oh, yeah. effects. You are to blame. I, I hope they don't listen to this because I don't have nice things to say about the effects of this movie. <laughs> It's like it's like they misunderstood everything that made that first one great. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, I ca- I cannot get over the choice of the the white walls. It, oh, I, it's I, it's I bad design. It, they're they're so blown out the whole movie. Everything looks ugly, and yeah. it's just like a piece of like like plastic. Like like it, <laughs> it looks, looks so cheaper bad. than the first movie. Way but cheaper. It, it couldn't have been. It couldn't have been. Though. It must have had more budget. Like it was five it years to. later. Let's yeah. see. Oh, that's crazy. Cube two budget. Yeah, there's some speculation. I don't know if there's anything confirmed. 
Some people are saying, I hear it was this much, but it's like, I, I, I can't. <laughs> Good source. <laughs> I heard it from a friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, uh, the, the, yeah, let's talk about the set design because it's, it's very bright mm -hmm. uh, for absolutely no reason. Yeah. Which is weird because the director is a cinematographer. I know. A he's, he's a cinematographer for Pulp Fiction and, uh, and Reservoir, Reservoir Dogs. Dogs. Like, like, American Psycho, what? yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. What the fuck? So I can only imagine, like, he built the set this way or, you know, wanted it this way to make it easier for lighting. Because I think he was the, the cinematographer on this as well as directing it. So... Maybe it just made everything easier. That's just like turn the lights. Yeah, up to maybe full, just no one. Brightness. Maybe no one cared, and they were like, "Let's just do this as fast as possible and get sure. paid and get out." Because that's the feeling that I have. None of the actors are acting like they give a shit. They're all <laughs> terrible, and they and I and I. It's like okay, they're all Canadian actors again. Try not not trying to be mean to my homeland, but these are like the D tier. If the last actors were like the A and B tier, mm -hmm. uh, and they're all acting like they don't care that they're in a death trap, like. At all mm -hmm. like they're mm -hmm. they're practically like quipping about it and it was it was awful yeah God. yeah the 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 pool of talent in this one is not not quite the same the guy who with the knife <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i think funny. i think the he's welsh jacket? um okay. oh really he's a he's a main character in american psycho 2 and i immediately recognized him because <laughs> oh. i covered that recently oh, and for some that. reason it was also the same costume designer and somehow i <laughs> pulled that out <laughs> like i looked at the name in the credits i was like donna wong <laughs> was that the, That's funny. the costume designer from american psycho 2 <laughs> I was, like, okay. was that a canadian movie uh, american psycho i don't 2? know I, did, I don't know. I think the first uh, one was, definitely. Oh, really? Mm. Was it? I think we shot in Toronto. Yeah, we shot in Toronto. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I, I mean, know. filmed in Canada versus Canadian movie. There's a lot of movies filmed. In. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Uh, but yeah, some weird connections to American Psycho 2 for no reason. I, I don't that's, know why. Yeah, that's bizarre. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I was looking up a bunch of the actors, and I'm, uh, this one and maybe even the third one, and American Psycho 2 kept coming up. Yeah, and uh, uh, I don't know why. And, and Murdoch mysteries. Well, every Canadian actor has been on Murdoch mysteries. <laughs> I think yeah, it's like a okay. He moved to Canada. Murdoch sorry <laughs> okay. yeah from it's Wales pretty much and then moved to canada sorry uh yeah so yeah murdoch murdoch mysteries has been going on for like 17 years i think at this point but like every single cast member has been on that show yeah mm -hmm. and probably the red green show at some point true <laughs> you don't need to explain what the red green show is alex do you know what the red green show is <laughs> no please explain what you're talking about because you speak it you, can you say it again in english <laughs> for me <laughs> they like saying that in these movies <laughs> It's just this bad comedy show. Oh, it's a good comedy oh, show. Just terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it was a is classic. Their last it, names? What does it mean? Uh, Red <laughs> Green is the name of the character, and it's a guy who is just like a Canadian. He dresses up in like plaid, kind of lumberjacky, and the show is kind of like a. Um, it, it's, <laughs> it's supposed, like home improvement. Exactly. Right? It's supposed <laughs> yeah, to be like, like a. Time. Here I'm I'm going to teach you how to be a handyman but he just uses duct tape for everything and it just works. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and so he'll like, you guys were raised on. It's got like 2,000 ratings on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Red Green's oh, awesome. Yeah. There's a bunch of it on YouTube. Um there's some classic it, it's a part of our heritage. Yeah. You might say. If you like if you like anti-comedy, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember enjoying it when I was younger. I don't think I actually watched it. I just saw like a million commercials for it. Yeah. And then they had a movie called Duct Tape Forever, which why are oh, we even did. talking about this? <laughs> well, then I'm just going to point out the, his sidekick, Red Green, mm -hmm. looks like literally he was identical to look and act and general presence of my... Uh, youth counselor at my church <laughs> that my parents made me go to when I was younger. <laughs> so that was funny. Um, that's, that's funny. <laughs> all right. Before this conversation turns into a real hypercube, let's get back to the film. So we're talking about the sets. Uh, there's one part where, actually a couple parts, where it almost just seems like they're green screened, but I wasn't sure if they were because the lighting from behind them was so blown out and overexposed that mm. that outline could have just been because of how <laughs> shit the lighting was. So it so it made it look like a green screen when I'm not sure it was. I know that they did a, a use they did use green screen at a couple points during the film, 
but you know some of the characters were like upside down i was like you didn't even have to green screen that if you just thought about it for a bit <laughs> yeah it's very strange turn the camera you know well speaking of speaking of like you know we were talking about how great uh the original opens like the opening scene uh what the hell happens in this it's like you're expecting some you know kill or something like that <laughs> she falls <and> up <laughs> She just like gets yanked upwards ah. and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I, <laughs> you don't even know if she dies. No, so well, we're she just doesn't, like right? we're just laughing, and then they get the hard cut to like cube, hyper cube, or something. <laughs> and like it's that. not <laughs> it's not scarier because there's no physics. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what they thought was happening. They're like, we're taking it the next level. <laughs> People, you're gonna think she falls down? Uh uh. Up? No. It's scarier when you fall up because then it's on your head when you land. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Oh, my God. Um, but yeah, this movie also introduces like time warp things, slow rooms, fast rooms. Which, I mean, to its credit, I think that's a good concept. There's, you know, if you're, if you're going to mix up the formula uh, for a sequel and, you know, you've got the same set, you've got to introduce some new mechanic, I think. And there's a lot that could have been done with that that they didn't really no. do. I couldn't even follow like the plot. Like maybe yeah, I just the, wasn't the, paying it, attention. It like ruins the fundamental rules, you know. Like while there's still yeah. some crazy sci-fi stuff going in that original, you can kind of keep up with the characters. But here it's like when they're talking about quantum teleportation and these yeah, like, gel walls like... that like burn you. It's like too much to try and explain, and yeah, it, it just loses that fundamental horror or, or, or tension. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, who cares it's what happens it's, to any of these people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're really annoying. It's yeah. one of my notes here is just annoying <laughs> characters. Remember the old lady? <laughs> oh, she was straight out of an M Night Shyamalan movie. Oh yeah, yeah yes. That's, and here's yeah, exactly. here's what's weird about this is they decided that everybody got to keep their clothes in this one. So in the yeah. original, it was like okay, you, they their clothes get stolen by whoever kidnapped them or something, and mm -hmm. they have essentially prison uniforms with their names on it. But the characters are so distinct and likable and memorable that you never need to like they don't need to be dressed differently for them to, uh, you know, for, for you to remember who's yeah. who and all this shit. In right. this film, they're dressed differently, but there's nothing to the characters. There's nothing to yeah. that. Like they're, they're very simple and basic and pretty annoying. Very annoying yeah, characters. Yeah, the characters are their costumes, basically. That's all I really He's, remember about them yeah. as people. That's just like lazy writing. It like, is very. Yeah. Woman, woman in a ball ball gown. That's her character, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Old Yowza. lady in gym clothes. The ratings on this show just doubled. <laughs> is that a line? <laughs> that was the Todd Howard guy, yeah. He looks exactly like Todd Howard, and he was a video game developer. Oh, yeah, yeah he does. I, <laughs> is it, that's, that's the young guy. I thought for yeah, some yeah. reason he reminded me of like, uh, uh, like a teenage Jordan Peterson, the way he spoke. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's just very strange. Uh, how about when they have sex, and there's sex in the cube? We're um, fucking yeah. in the cube now, guys, and they're spinning in the middle they're of like hovering. the room like a top. Like, what was that? And then they die? They well, so here's what happened: is they went to the beach. I mean, room that turns you old. Right, <laughs> and also those those dummies. Uh, oh that there's, my god! I don't know if they were supposed to be rotted corpses or rapidly aging corpses, but they looked like something out of a spoof movie. Like it yes. really, really yeah. did. Like I was laughing. That lighting is not doing them any favors. No, and they no. really hold on close-ups of them for very long periods. It's, it's like something shot. you'd find at like Spirit Halloween or something. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The makeup oh, yeah. also near the end of the film, I was like, is the implication that he's getting older or is he frozen? I think they did spray like Halloween old oh, spray paint on. I thought the... it was frozen. I think it's older because it's right? like a kind Wait, of. It's, it's I thought it was supposed to be older. I thought it was supposed to be older because he's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like then a it doesn't make sense because yeah. It's like a kind of a time wave or something. Yeah. It like never, it never implied that there was like a cold room. <laughs> no, there was like an ice room, wasn't there? No. There was like ice shards coming out of the wall. I think that was... I don't think yeah, so. Like, I think there was. No, yeah, those, yeah. Were, those weren't... Were, were those supposed they to be ice? ice? I thought those were just supposed to be like random cubes. Just like glass. Yeah. Crystal glass. Or glass yeah, like or something I don't think like that, that was supposed to be ice. It's an utter failure of yeah. the CGI that we don't even we don't even know what it is <laughs> supposed tell, to be. Yeah. See, that's that yeah. sucks because in the original film, you, you know, sure, the spikes are CG, but they're spikes. They're you, they're metal. <laughs> yeah. Metal adjacent. Keep it simple of... stupid, yeah. It's like easy to understand. Yeah. yeah. 
You know that you can get impaled by them. You know you can get, like, sliced by the fucking metal wire. But when you're using fucking crystal CG, like, <laughs> we don't know what the hell that is supposed to be. Now we're all arguing over whether or not it's supposed to be ice <laughs> or cold. Or, like, we, <laughs> none of us old know. Ray. For four different people <laughs> to watch the Ray. same film and none of us have, like, any solid comprehension <laughs> about what that was supposed to be. <laughs> and it influences how we feel about the makeup in, uh, for a major character near the end of the film. Of is he supposed to be old or cold? <laughs> is it old, old or cold? Or cold? <laughs> we don't know. That's insane. <laughs> that, that, it just is uh, absolutely it's, it's an, not it's a being choice able to by the director things. to keep it ambiguous. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, uh, what do you think? Uh, is he cold or old? Old or cold? <laughs> this, this is me. This is as the director. I'm thinking this. Uh, well, like also, they, they they made absolutely no effort to make them look like they had been in there for any m- m- amount of time. But mm-hmm. that just goes with my comment no. of them. They don't act like they are even in a death trap, really, at all. The, the scenes are interchangeable. You could take yes. oh, yeah, absolutely. scenes from anywhere in the movie and place them anywhere in the movie, and it would flow just the same. There's no yeah. sense of progression. There's no sense of discovery. There's no sense of like... You know, the makeup in the original movie and the continuity there or like the characters getting angrier with each other and having that happen in a realistic, empathetic sort of way. No, it's just it's all just fucking random. It might as well just be random. And it goes well, on Especially forever. with the whole uh, the whole doppelganger thing. Where it's like oh, yeah. People die and then duplicates of them just show up later. So like the deaths don't even mean as much. No. <laughs> and the, the whole thing of like at the end of the first cube, it's like a triumphant moment for that character. Yeah. But like when the woman makes it to the end of this one, it's like, I don't even understand what you did to even get here. <laughs> no. <laughs> She just yeah, survived, I guess, and then like she gets out, and I also I hate that we see outside, and then they just blow her brains out. So how am I supposed to feel about that? Oh yeah. <laughs> if you had, if you asked me to even tell you which character made it out, I wouldn't have been able to say before I know. you arrived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. And then yeah, you reminding me about that that ending, and it's a very distinct ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was convinced that I actually hadn't seen this film. <laughs> and then when I rewatched it, I was like, oh, I guess I guess I have at one point, at least once, because some of it was just kind of familiar. And then at the very ending, I was like, OK, for sure, this is there's something about this that I definitely watched before. And I watched this two days ago and now I, like <laughs> yeah. I've forgotten it again already. Right. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's, I had to my notes insane. just sort of like uh, peter out <laughs> by the end. So I had to look up yeah. like how it ended. I'm like, yeah. What a oh nothing God, movie. Yeah. Just like the movie, yeah, yeah. But it's interesting, uh, April, you just said about them going out of the cube and how that ruins so much of like the world building and the mystique. They do it another time in the movie when they're introducing each one of those characters. And there's kind mm-hmm. of that, yeah. there's like graphic montages for each yeah. one, just like pointlessly screen. visually explaining each one. Yeah, the split screen. And so wh- why? It's, it's kind of ruining the, the atmosphere to, yes. to pull you visually out of I suppose it's like an ugly Apple store the whole time, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I looked at anything to get out of this this bright Bland. white <laughs> heavenly yeah, yeah. light. <laughs> but it's like, why? Like color is, is that is such a strange choice. Considering, yeah, he's a cinematographer. Surely he'd understand the, you know, the the mood you can get over, what you can communicate with color, especially. It's just such a baffling decision. I, I think it has to be just, uh, you know, for efficiency. This is like probably his but, yeah, first let's time. Let's just directing. make it all look ugly, though, and then we don't have to make anything. It's look, just like look good. you know, look, I'll, I'll save money. I'm going to be the cinematographer. It's like I've never directed a movie before. Uh, just light the whole thing up, Johnny, and then whatever. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> it, we'll just, do it like, live. Shoot it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like you don't have to change lighting between <laughs> setups. And... That's what I'm feeling. I don't think he cared. I think oh, it's yeah. just a paycheck, probably. <laughs> there's a, there's a really frustrating moment in this film where the character says out loud. The gravity is shifting, and then the camera turns 90 degrees. The t- it tilts 90 degrees. Yep. But the f- gravity doesn't shift. The characters just walk the <laughs> same. The gravity <laughs> is the same down direction down the as it was before. <laughs> so but the camera... Like, there's so many interesting and creative ways you can do this and still do it practically, by the way. Right? You can just cut it at the, at the right time where at the start of... At the start of the shot, they're in one position where it makes it seem as long as they're standing still that they're in gravity's in one particular way but it's not and then you tilt the camera and then you reveal that gravity was you know blah 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 blah, blah. yeah well, like Raimi's Spider-Man was like a year before this right and that true does a similar kind true. of thing true mm-hmm. 
And especially with the set where like the floor could be the ceiling. You don't yeah. have to do anything crazy to yeah. achieve that effect. That's you don't how they did it in the first up- movie. You don't have to build an upside down set. The set is an upside down set. <laughs> you fucks. <laughs> like- <laughs> you you've you've thought about this for, you know, a few minutes at least, you know. So <laughs> you don't don't expect the director to have done the same. No. Yeah. No. He's just happy to be working. <laughs> Man, yeah, what a crazy frustrating film. Oh, and yeah, it's just, yeah, it made me angry. It's just rotten. And uh, I'm like, wow, okay, that first one is better than I give it credit for <laughs> mm-hmm. at the time. And I mean, if we're doing the thing we do in our podcast where we have to say something nice about it, the only nice thing I can say yeah, is that yeah. it was laughably uh, inept and I laughed at it at parts. So hey, the, I, some mm, of the, the kind of hypercube, you get that kind of like uh, floating geometry. Oh my God, that thing, <laughs> that, that float... F- Spinning cube tetra. What do they call it? A tesseract. Uh, tesseract. Oh, yeah. tesseract. That's it. Yeah, uh, it looked like yeah. Crap. it's like kind of folding in on itself. So it's revealed. Oh god. So it kind of opened the that about blind. That. The <laughs> blind girl was she actually blind or was yes. that all fake? Wait, I think we, <laughs> there was a twist well, with her, but I I can't remember like the, what the, the twist was, was that that she was some famous hacker. That built the cube. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. Hid, she hid from people. She hid. She she blew the whistle on something, and she's like, "I went the only where place they wouldn't follow me into the hypercube." Oh, yeah. yeah, she found out. Yeah, they were putting human. It's like this company called Eyes On or something <laughs> that I think is yes. behind everything. Yeah, and then she's like, "I find out that they were like putting people into the hypercube, uh, and they were going to kill me, so I, I escaped by going into the hypercube." Uh, yeah, like, and I, I don't even remember ass. how she dies. But <laughs> it's... Izon, that owns the com- the video game company Cyber Thrill. <laughs> that <laughs> the, the, the other, guy works for. The other character makes games for, and he's going to sue them for some reason, and they're like, you'll oh. never win the lawsuit against Cyber Thrill. But there's also Cyber a lawyer. Thrill. Yeah, they're all connected there. somehow. I represent Izon. <laughs> right. Why so many characters? <laughs> it's like, what? There's eight main characters here. Yeah, it's too way much. Too ma- way too many. Like, I think there's uh, seven total in the first one but the first guy gets killed immediately mm-hmm. and yeah. then uh yeah then there's six and then we goes down to five really fast is there a single good like death scene no that's some of the most memorable stuff in that first movie well the only no, one no, i remember no. is that cg cube like sucking up the jerry whitehall guy and like kind of dicing him jelly. But it, you look yeah you just yeah but that looked like, terrible do. yeah it looked, <laughs> it looked kind of funny but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then he's back yeah, yeah, that guy, uh, uh, that that's that super Canadian actor that yeah, has like almost three hundred credits or something. That's like he's been in a lot of commercials and stuff. Well, but... look up any actor in this, yeah. and they've <laughs> just been in every Canadian TV show since the dawn of time. But then it's all revealed that the the blonde woman who survives to the end was like a plant sent in by Izon to get <sighs> the blind girl's necklace, right? That had all the oh, yeah. hacking information or something oh, that yeah. she was going to release. But, I forgot. Oh god. <laughs> And then it's like, but she's like in a pool and it's a, is that yeah. how you enter the cube and it's not re- a real physical place? I don't know. Uh, be sure. You know, it's theoretical, <laughs> Any, anything is possible. Yeah. I don't know how it connects. I mean, other than sort of taking the, the concept of like the cube and traps and whatnot, I don't know how it's supposed to connect to the first one like at all. So I don't know. I kind of got the sense that it was like, well, people who thought the first one was boring and you never got to see what's outside. <laughs> what? We're, we're going to make it cooler. We're going to show you what boring yeah. is. Yeah. Th- there's, this, <laughs> there's this really awful trap that, sequels find themselves in or just people who don't know what to do with an IP making a sequel where they think we got to double it <laughs> got du- to double everything yeah. that was good you got to double it but they don't understand what was good and they're like well what was good about the first movie was that probably there were like a few thousand rooms or 10,000 rooms so we're going to just have this line where the old lady says, in a hypercube, there could be 60 million rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, that, so that's that, crazier. That crazy? The physics are crazier. There's more There's more characters and there's more versions of the same characters and none of them ever really die. And there's... <laughs> no, yeah. Fuck, it's just so convoluted and stupid and nothing matters. Yeah. They're so hung up on the scale for some reason. We're going to double the brightness. The they room, just, it's, the, the cube itself is, is bigger, and that, that bugged me too. Yeah, the first one was only fourteen feet. Yeah, exactly. It just seems like they're just hanging out in like a waiting room or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, it looks like you know when you go to uh, Hideo Kojima's office, 
uh, his, his new office for his game company. He has that mm-hmm. big like that. white room. It's like, you know, the, it looks like the 2001 room or something like oh, that. Oh, that's funny. Mm. Yeah. Is there, is there a, um, what's the opposite of a, a weeb? Because that's what Kojima is. I think someone said Westaboo. <laughs> Westaboo. <laughs> Uh, All right, what do we think? What, what's our rating on Hypercube? Oof. How many yeah, Hypercubes out of 10? I give it one. <laughs> Giving it one. <laughs> yeah, this is rotten. I would give it like two. It's there's nothing that's very generous. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, I'm ta- I'm taking it down. <laughs> no, you you were right. You were like, I like the idea Stand of firm, yeah. this thing. Well, yeah, it's like the concept, but they they they, they just drop the ball on like using... they drop the cube. They dropped, they did, they they dropped the hypercube. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, 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 there was something about this that, even though it was so dumb and annoying and like missed the whole point, I was kind of compelled by just where they were taking it. It's just like what? Where did they take it, Alex? Nowhere. Like, it's just crazy. Outside it's, like, the it's, cube. it's slightly longer as well than that first one. <laughs> yeah, it's like five minutes longer, um, and it feels it. But I don't know. I was kind of just like. No way that it, for, okay, the gravity's shifting. Okay, now it, now it's a tesseract. Now there's quantum teleportation. It's just so, like, man. And then the doppelgangers <laughs> and the fact that I couldn't, I couldn't even remember like when you <laughs> when you're recapping what that main character's like point was, and I can't remember a single attribute of her character. But uh, no, no, is there a main she character? She didn't have a uh, the blonde. Is that the main character? Are we deci- Are we deciding that's the main character? I'm, I'm deciding just the main character. Yeah, okay. I think so. Yes. Um, yeah, but uh, the know. cube is more of a character in this film uh, than any of the others. <laughs> it's the eighth, the ninth character. And yeah, like just the the Todd Howard showing up and all these characters <laughs> and the, the the floating sex scene. Like, yeah, I don't know. This was like a one and a half star to me. Uh, stupid, but you're all you're all so nice. <laughs> yeah, I give it an extra an extra star for uh, the, him stabbing that old lady. <laughs> Yeah, Lots the old lady does does get stabbed. I forgot. Yeah, because you shouldn't trust her for some reason. Heaps of stabbing. That guy's stabbing everybody in this movie. Yeah, they all had all like <laughs> accessories. He gets he collects a bunch of watches. I was kind of <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, hoping that's for right. him to be like decked out with like just yeah. armor of watches and like a <laughs> that's flavor right. The first real death that. you see is is a guy trying to hang himself like right with his yeah, yeah. that's right his tie. It's not even and like he a never trap. shows up really again much. Just we just see d- different versions of him having hung himself. So we know that his character throughout every alternate reality is so consistent. The moment he wakes up and is a, in a cube, he's like, "Well, yeah, at I'm least dead. I could I could I'm try dead. this da- David Carradine trick. It's always been too risky before, but I got nothing." <laughs> yeah, to lose, I mean, so. what does he got to lose? Yeah, go exactly. for it. You might as well see if it feels good. He handcuffs himself to the <laughs> ladder, doesn't he? Just so he can get like melted. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the, the odds of me being found are astronomical. Um, astronomical. Uh, astronomical against anything. Higher than a one feels wrong for me. Yeah, okay. I d- I can't stomach it. I can't stomach it. it. A two feels too generous for me. Easy one out of ten. Terrible, awful movie. They misunderstood the assignment. Not I. It's it sucks how forgettable something is when I've clearly seen it before, but I didn't even know. Didn't even know that I'd seen it before. <laughs> if you asked me whether or not I'd seen Hypercube, I would say no. Of course, like I haven't. I don't suppressing. remember anything yeah. about it. I don't know what Hypercube is. <laughs> I've logged in the letterbox, so I, I I know that I will remember never to watch this movie again. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> even by accident. Yeah, I give it an extra star just just for the name. You know, the, <laughs> Good uh, the confidence to put an Hypercube in there. <laughs> that I'm not gonna I'm gonna forget a lot about this movie, but not Hypercube. Do you think like Elon Musk watched, is a big fan of this movie when he was coming up with hyper <laughs> hyper loop? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not just a regular loop. Mm-hmm. It's hyper. It's hyper. It's hyper. Loop. Needs to calm down. There are two more quotes that I uh, just see in my notes that I want to mention before we uh, move on. Uh, I hate how they tried or at least pretended for a moment to be doing this math thing, but they say maybe it's a coordinate of some kind, but in four dimensions. It's like okay, fuck. Go fuck yourself. And I, I was I was hoping for more complicated math, but there was none. They just didn't care. And then You're the line, about. holy shit, variable time speed rooms. One of those words feels redundant, <laughs> right? Like time and speed. A variable do mean? doesn't can, that mean uh, trying to sound yeah, smart. Variable yeah. speed rooms, you could say, or variable time room. What is time speed? Bullshit. And How she fast? was so stupid for not understanding he was in slow mo. Like he 
He would have been. St- he was stuck there for like a year and had to come to her. <laughs> she was just like, "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you say Awful. properly? Awful. And I can't. Uh, without my notes, I would not remember anything in this fucking movie. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> garbage. All right, uh, Cube Zero is a prequel film from 2004. What? Oh. I didn't know Did that. You not know that? <laughs> no. It's news to me. It's a prequel. I mean, it's zero. I, I just, I, I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, uh, I'm assu- I think it is, right? Now you're making myself second guess myself. I no, I, I think it, it is, cube. but I didn't know that until I looked it up today. Oh, okay. that's funny. I mean, yeah, it must be, right? Like the technology is not as advanced so. as the hyper. So. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's like more rusty. They kind of yeah they they go in a different direction. Very. Uh, it's like a side cool to to cube the original maybe. Yeah, side cool. It's, it's another cube. Okay. Somewhere who okay. knows? I'm just trying yes. To, a I'm side. <laughs> Uh, what do we say about this movie? They, they, uh, directed by Ernie Barbarash. <laughs> Barbarash. It's funny how they, they, whose name came up on the second one, and I think he's the producer or writer of okay. the second I think one. Producer, I think. And again, I don't think he had directed anything before. So they keep giving these movies to people who like are, aren't directors. <laughs> also, director Ernie Barbarash, producer. On American Psycho 2. Yeah, oh. see, there's more connections. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know oh why God. movies are intertwined, but apparently <laughs> so they weird. are. Have you seen that, by the way? Have no, guys- I haven't, oh I haven't seen it. No, no, I haven't seen it. I should watch it. The Mila Kunis? Yeah, it's, it's great yeah. to watch right after American Psycho 1. <laughs> 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 it's a very unique experience. It's not, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get it. So, in some ways, this film kind of tries to go back to its roots, almost as if kind to of. attempt <laughs> to correct uh, the Cube Two Hypercube disaster. Yeah, uh, and in some, in some, you know, that we we get the opening death scene that's kind of reminiscent of the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it did have some good practical effects. That mm-hmm. you know the guy's mm-hmm. face and skin falling off. Hey, we've There's got some the, fun uh, stuff. That was pretty we've cool. got some some colored lighting in the rooms. True. Like yeah. it's obviously the cube looks better than the last movie because any it would have to. Um, but I didn't care for this movie really at all. But it was better than the last one. Yeah, obviously. better than Hypercube. <laughs> yeah. Really, I don't. Know. I, I I found Hypercube more entertaining. I'm gonna be real. This one was more, <laughs> this one was, this one was more boring. Uh, like it, it was really boring. <laughs> I think it's I think it's better shot than the second film. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, technically it is better. And also yeah. I thought the acting was better. But if you like to laugh at bad acting, then you definitely want to watch two over this one. Although yeah. the second half of this film, Cube Zero. Oh my god. I'm just kinda I'm so I'm so confused why this weird uh Character. eyeball man <laughs> yeah. who seems like he belongs in literally a goosebumps kids show yes you're yes. not wrong christopher right? lloyd totally. could have played him he was like that level of like chewing the scenery goofy yeah it's such a yeah. weird choice they like really focused on the the sci-fi element with these sequels yeah like, like the, his underlings had these like oh, finger fuck. sci-fi things in the keyboard it's like time. flipped over for no reason and it was like Robot a sci-fi hands. keyboard yeah. yeah, it's almost like Johnny Mnemonic. It's props exactly that have like been Johnny left over. <laughs> yeah, and the sound effects too when they're like using their fucking invisible keyboards, like beep 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 boop. <laughs> Every time it cuts back to them, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> it really goes off the rails when this character shows up. And I was kind of on board, I think, somewhat up to that point. You can admit it; it's <laughs> okay. Of, I was like, okay, okay, it's 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 winning me back to the Cube franchise here. You know, I. You got colored lights, you know, for different rooms. Uh, they they have that like uh, set that the two guys, the two kind of guys that are kind of monitoring everything. You know, they built a set. Uh, they got props and everything. I don't want props, and I don't want them to leave the cube. I don't want to see outside the cube. Now, Same. to be fair, they're Yeah, like, they, those yeah. two guys are 
kind of in the cube. They're just in like a nicer room. And that's mm-hmm. kind of revealed later. But well, um, I thought we were, you know, we're getting a glimpse behind the curtain, which uh, I thought they should have either committed to one way or the other. Like, you know, they okay, seemingly yeah, they yeah. Be throwing out concepts that they can't commit to at all. Yeah. That, was, that was kind of the hook for me. It was like, oh, so these are the guys that deal with who the, the, the contestants, if you want to call them, that actually yeah. manage to get out. And like, what happens next? Or where does that go? And there's that whole scene where they do deal with the the ex-co-worker who's in that position. And it's mm-hmm. it all comes down to this query about if they believe in God. <laughs> do you believe in and God? And it's like, oh, <laughs> which well. they never expound on. They never really like explain like where that's going. Yeah, I thought they were going to revisit that. Or, yeah, or exactly. It was, it was going to be some yeah. you know, twist at the end or Nothing something like that. Nothing came of that. The whole movie is just we're just doing testing, just just vague testing on what on everything. Yeah, I was thinking like at the ends, like one of the guys would make it out and like, do you believe in God? And then he says yes, and then yeah, they burn and then he him gets anyway. killed anyway. Yeah, but I mean that would be a pretty it's small stupid. payoff. Yeah, I, know, I know. I mean, what compared to the twist that they went with? Okay, <laughs> okay, I fucking hated that. Obviously, as I am such a big fan of the original, I thought it was an extremely poor taste, and they just wanted to connect it back to the the first movie and be like, oh god, Whoa, he's there. that guy. But that character wasn't uh, Lebon. Lobotomized. So the character doing? wasn't lobotomized, but I don't think so. They they set things up in a way where they're clearly, at the very least, trying to remind us of that <laughs> dynamic in that character. For sure. Yes, they are, yeah. and, they and so sh- the, it's the exact same dialogue, and they shoot it in the exact same exactly. way. Exactly. So the implication is that that he he was also lobotomized, which is the yeah. like not only dumb. But kind of offensive. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's, it, yeah, it offended insulting. me. It, that performance offended me, and uh, oh, yeah. also just offended me as a fan of the first one, where I thought the character was done so well, and then this is just like, <laughs> remember this character? Well, yeah. What if? Also, his name is different. Uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, his <laughs> name is different because I. Don't, so I just interpreted that as he's not literally that character. But yeah. perhaps over the course of time, there's enough of the exact same scenarios taking place. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's not the first guy to be lobotomized and he won't be the yeah, last. That's how I interpreted it, too. But the, the, the person I was watching it with, like, was confused as to, oh, is that supposed to be the same character? So it, it is just not communicated well, that whole yeah. twist. I was looking, like I was looking at his name tag. <laughs> it's a reference yeah, to, so to make people who love the first movie feel good, but it made me <laughs> angry. But mm. I was kind of, I was thinking, okay, they're going to do something different with this movie. We're going to, we're just all going to be seeing it from, you know, behind the curtain. Uh, and, and I wish they maybe should have committed to that instead of kind of just mixing the two. Uh, let's just let's just go behind the scenes, even though I don't really want to see that. It's like at least they're they're doing something different. Um, yeah, they couldn't help themselves though. The whole thing looked like a cheap Canadian TV show as well. I do. <laughs> yeah, very. It fe- it felt it it gave it me felt goosebumps like the outer vibes. limits. Yeah, goosebumps are like Star Trek, <laughs> Star Trek spinoff. So it's it's as if they. It, what's so weird about this? So. When I was watching these films when I was younger, I was like 13 or something, uh, I was doing so in such an uncritical way because my brain, I, that's just how I watched movies. And I was just like, I would just watch any horror movie and it didn't matter. And I did, you know, I didn't think about anything in terms of directing or production or just even like people involved artistically with the film and different voices and all that shit. And so when I was watching this, I remember a part of me being kind of excited that they were explaining more about what's outside because I just thought right. of it in terms of, <laughs> oh, yeah, there's more to this universe. I want to see them. I want to peel back the curtains a- as if the universe in of itself is some sort of like objectively existing thing and not just whatever the writers decide it is. Uh, mm-hmm. Watching this right now, it's sad that they're it's it's as if they want to explore more about what's outside, but they don't have the budget but the whole reason why <laughs> why the cube was inside in the first movie is because it's not only it's not only like <laughs> ooh practical for the sake of the script and the emotions but it's also practical for the budget which you don't want to be overly ambitious and show something you can't in a film like this especially if you don't have the talent uh in terms <laughs> of how to show it in a way that doesn't feel super fucking cheap like it kind of ruins it to know oh outside the cube is just a random forest and snipers. <laughs> like 
<laughs> what the That's fuck? it. Yeah. Yeah. What? And like, was that little girl just running around out there the whole time? I don't because know if that was she... real or what that was. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. It might was have it been a dream. A dream. <laughs> okay. Oh my it was god. It was his comic book. It was in his fan fiction that he was drawing the whole movie. Chess man and brain man. <laughs> 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 I forgot about oh, that. he should be hired by Marvel. True. Yeah, oh, God. Yeah, I think the people that want to see more of the the world behind the curtain, the same people that go to like Prometheus, and they're like, "Yeah, explain the the space jockey from from Alien." It's like, <laughs> yeah. no, no, you fool, <laughs> no. I want to know. Everything. I want to know how the universe started. <laughs> yes. Like, I want I want an explanation for everything. You see, he was always going to, uh, you know, Ridley Scott. He always meant to. Oh, yeah. This, this was the plan all along, Adam. He they wasn't just, just making it up. didn't have technology yet. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Same composer as American Psycho 2. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, I will God. say, like, the, 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 the score for this one and the last one was definitely trying to sound like the first score. I mean, yeah. Everything. Fa- failing. I thought some of the sounds they were whipping out were pretty bizarre. They were going for, like, bongos and accordions. And, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that's like right. A didgeridoo in there. <laughs> yes. It's, it's accordion there was music. a didgeridoo in there, too. It was like, what's that? Yeah. I felt like I was eating at, like, a Parisian cafe or something. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Alexander Des? Blah, was, did he do a, a Shape of Water? Or yes, I think so. Yeah. yeah, it was like watching Ratatouille or something. The accordions kind of reminded me of like Twelve Monkeys. I think maybe they said the same thing when we watched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. April yeah. said the same. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there's a part in the movie. So the do we? I barely remember any of the characters. There's the main guy. <laughs> I, I really can't. There's the a girl so he has a crush on, mm-hmm. and then everybody else. I uh, oh yeah, there's a guy who. Gets crazy cat eyes at the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like a super soldier. Yeah, he There's like a... jumps really high. Uh, yeah. yeah, he like Super Mario jumps. <laughs> yeah. They... He's got like a brain chip and a uh, <laughs> like a, 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 an insignia carved into his head. Head, his forehead, that's <laughs> like right. Like soldiers of some And I kind? think that, yeah. yeah, I think the snipers in her dream, so these two guys who are kind of observing the the people inside the cube record her dreams oh, and then yeah. they see... I forgot there was dream recording. <laughs> yeah, so, of course, <laughs> dream recording. Um, <laughs> so she's running from with her, with her daughter and then the snipers shoot her and then uh, bring her back into the cube and I think the snipers have the same kind of tattoo on their forehead. Uh, and it bugged me so much because his tattoo is like crooked a little bit. It's not <laughs> it's symmetrical. Just, it's not. Yeah, it really bugged me. Uh, There's the overweight gentleman. But when when she meets the soldier for the first time, uh, she's like, I hate you. Your, your people are scum. And then she spits in his face. And the edit is so funny. It's like you don't even see the spit yeah. leaving her mouth. <laughs> and they cut to the spit already on his face and yeah, just add yeah. like a splat sound effect. That's and it's funny. it's it's so cheesy. Great editing. So, <laughs> the okay, so they, they make an attempt to explain first what's beyond the cube. So, in a way where you see who's the people who are in the control room recording dreams for some reason who are not prisoners but might be later. And we get <laughs> the explanation of, the, I, I don't know why, but they get fed, like, I guess, really high calorie pill meals that may or may not taste like oh, yeah, entire yeah. fancy <laughs> dinners. There's a red and a blue pill, I think. True. One is that steak had to frites. be a reference. Yeah, One is steak frites. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that's the whole dream of the future. It's like in the future, we'll, we'll you don't have to eat take food. Take a pill and they'll make you eat the bugs. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the the what was it the cricket cubes from Snowpiercer? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so yeah. so when introducing their lives, they they kind of they're trying to explain more, but I'm still left with more questions because we don't know how they got there. We don't know like they don't know why they're there, and they apparently signed some consent form. But did they? Uh, and also, I don't know how long they've been there. I don't know how long the film takes place over. And mm-hmm. it's weird how their entire life, as we see it, it's just playing chess and sitting and recording dreams and like maybe drawing a comic picture. Mm-hmm. Do they have beds? Mm-hmm. Do they sleep any? Like, do they have a room there that they sleep in? <laughs> yeah, or do the I pills just so. keep them so hyped up that they never have to sleep? Is it? They just are take they a pill for pills? that as well. 
Yeah. Yeah. It reminded maybe. me of like two characters from like Lost or something like that. Like mm. this would this would be one of the Lost like what mm. do they call them? The, the stations uh, where it's just two the guys Dharma like stations. yeah. But the, that giving. structure is so truncated. You know, because mm-hmm. there's all this time wasted on setting these guys up in this room that's <laughs> never <nothing>. really <laughs> expounded on. But at the same time, they do keep cutting inside the cube where it's basically just a retelling of the first movie, but yeah. mm-hmm. worse in every way. But boring or yeah, yeah. boring. Like, they they just go ahead and all, like have these characters all have already met and they're just like, hey, we're a team and we're going, you know, like we yeah. didn't get we don't get to know any of them or get to see them discover each other or. Yeah, because they're kind of splitting the time up between the people in the cube and the people outside of the cube. Um, but then it's sort of revealed that there's other people kind of higher up than the people outside, but we never really see who they're talking to on the phone or whatever. It's just guy with a cane. Uh, oh yeah. Oh my God. That's the, it, that's the only uh, higher up person. <laughs> he, 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 I guess owns the entire business, but also his hands are in it so much and he oversees everything and like shows up for the lobotomy just to say something and like, like just the one guy who just really likes being in control of everything and he's just I, so weird his reveal is so so bad when the goofy. elevator doors the elevator doors open and there's like a glint on his eye it's insane <laughs> it's just like what are we doing now i feel like <laughs> the genre movie. changed as soon as he showed up <laughs> yes <laughs> yes exactly. it the schlock in that moment yeah yeah, they might as well have goofy, silly music playing. His whole fucking entourage <laughs> is goofy as fuck with their silly Johnny mnemonic gloves and their typing beep, 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 noises. Yeah. I just, I don't know what the hell they were going for. I don't know why they would want that in this film or this universe because it's supposed to be a horror movie. It's rated yeah. R. <laughs> like, this isn't a kid's show. What the fuck? Is he supposed to be scary or funny? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, like, it's, <laughs> it's impossible to tell. Yeah. Yeah. It's very... It's very broad. The The performance is very broad. Extremely. Yeah. He has a line where he's like, I don't trust technology or something like this. When he's got, he's got like a crystal robot eye. I was like, I don't, I don't really know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> which which annoyed me again because it was not level with his other eye. No, it's, <laughs> it's just, it was, it was a bad there, prosthetic. Yeah. It looked terrible. <laughs> They're lucky the director of the second movie didn't do this. It would just be blasted with light and you'd see how shitty oh, it God. looked. Yeah, you're right. He's somewhat of a cool name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the character died... He decides, even though he's, you know, trying not to stir the pot the entire film he's like i'm gonna get in trouble if i talk to you shut up things are fine by the end of the movie when the other when the whole goofy entourage shows up and his friends (laughs) in trouble he tries to help him by uh yanking out electrical cables (laughs) uh that very nonchalantly too he like there's literally just the film plays it so seriously and as if it it wasn't as if he's not one of the strongest people on the fucking planet (laughs) just (laughs) yanking these things out that are live electrical cables just moving it like as if it's nothing and it's so weird that you know if you you almost don't realize how crazy it is what they're showing but yeah, and they have, yeah. like, the most pitiful, like, kind of CG sparks that they've kind of comped over them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I hated that whole set, the, their, their room with all the wires and the, <laughs> the monitors. I just didn't like looking at it. Very uninspired. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I agree. At least at least the cube has, you know, the cube back looked to basics. a little more like the regular cube. The one good thing about yeah, this movie is uh, Sailor Moon was in it. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, the girl, woman who did the voice for the uh, the English Ooh. dub of Sailor Moon, because of course it was dug, dubbed by uh, I think it was Deke in Canada, full all Canadian Deke. cast because oh. it was because it was cheaper, and she is in the movie, and I was like, wow, she has a really like high pitched voice, <laughs> and then I looked her up, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, you can always tell when people are voice actors in Usually, movies, yeah. it's like wow, what a unique voice, and you look them up, uh, of course, that's funny. The inside of the cube might have looked. Way better than the first, sorry, the the second movie. Mm -hmm. A bit more close to the first movie. It's like, okay, we're trying to bring things back. The CG exterior cube shot, so when it's showing (laughs) it moving through, like when when it's doing the elevator thing. Right. It's too bright. 
and you can see everything, and that's probably yeah. why it looks so shit. The original film, yeah. you you know, there was a point in time in the late '90s where good movies recognized, hey, if you just have things really dark, the CG looks better. Let's <laughs> obscure this somehow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy that it looks worse than the original. Yeah. Looks much worse. There was a point in like the kind of like uh, end of the '90s, beginning of 2000s, where it's just like we can do fucking anything in CG, show yeah. it all, and yeah. we were not there, not yet. understanding <laughs> limitations. <laughs> <laughs> and even today, it's like trying to make the whole movie in CG and then just wanting to do it cheaply and <laughs> like, yeah. oh, let's we don't want to pay the animators that much. So let's just make <laughs> the whole movie look weirdly dark. Let's do. Let's just make the whole movie dark. Okay, fuck off. Oh my god, I, I have a weird note here that I'm curious if uh, any of you noticed. So, on the Blu-ray and on the Amazon version, I checked with people in my chat, there's there's a black line in the top left corner, at the very top left corner of the frame, that just stays there the entire movie, that doesn't go oh, all the really? way across the screen. I didn't notice that. <laughs> you might not see it, because if you're watching it in full screen, there might be like a part of your monitor or television that's covering it. But oh. I was watching it in a window uh, on my monitor, oh. like in windowed mode, and I you don't can know. see I it. Didn't notice, and it's there, and it's like actually just in the official release. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't notice it. We watched this on Tubi. No one did get like any quality control on this, apparently. Uh, and what's cr- it. what's crazy about it is this has a fucking Blu-ray. It's from two thousand four, <laughs> right? <laughs> And and it's so sad, the commentary on how films get successful or how films have longevity in terms of uh, passive income and sales. The only reason this has this is because it says Cube in the title. You could release <laughs> the exact same fucking movie, not put Cube in the title, wouldn't get a fucking DVD, wouldn't get a Blu-ray, right? It, nobody would be buying it on iTunes or whatever over the course of time. It's making all of this residual income just for the name alone because it's a. Mm-hmm. Part, it feels like it's a part of a franchise, and everybody that watches it just forgets how bad it is and wants to revisit it every fucking ten years, I guess, or some shit. Or, <laughs> or they forget they it. watched it. Yeah, well, I believe uh, yeah. this was this wasn't re- released theatrically. It was just direct to video, straight to video. Okay. Yeah, so that maybe that's why. But you know, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't think Blu-rays were out in two thousand four, were they? It seems a tad early. Yeah, uh, I think it was like two thousand. That's true. That's early. So, yeah, yeah. So ev- eventually, someone decided, "Hey, <laughs> there's enough interest that we can release an HD <laughs> version of this." Oh my god! Which is it's just, just sad so to bizarre. think about, based on the quality of the film. Well, I don't know. The weirdest things what get quality? Blu-ray re- releases exactly. these days. It's true. Um, yeah. I-, I did get a good laugh. Speaking of the kills, they've got a few good ones in this movie. I forget. Um, I forget yeah, the guy's right. name. He's like I the fat. Guy. I hate saying it. he's like the fat guy character. Uh, oh, he yeah. is a horrible death. What he's like the nicest him? guy in the movie, and usually you kind of save those deaths for like you know the real villain. <laughs> the villain. Right, right, right. Okay, he gets. It's like, a flesh <laughs> it's like what did he do to deserve this? Yes, it's like Saw. You're yeah. You're fat. <laughs> you are a smoker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he. It's like uh, I think <laughs> one of the women walks into a cube and steps on like this hypodermic needle that comes up from the ground. Hypercubic. Uh, and needle. I. Uh, I, 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 I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, That's Sailor Moon. I think that was Sailor Moon. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. So it's and then it's like a, it's revealed to be like a flesh eating disease or something, and so they all come into the room and she's there, and then the fat guy's like, "No," nah, and he starts wrestling with her, and then she scratches him, and he's like, "Oh, it's nothing. It's just a scratch." And then I love every time they cut back to him, uh, within seconds, his like face is like deteriorating more and more and more. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> any of this. I watched this two days ago. And then they're like, well, you're dying, so you're going to help us, like, uh, you know, figure out which rooms are trapped. Yeah. So they send him into the next room, and I think he, like, one of the guys pushes him, uh, you know, so he's already got this flesh-eating disease. He's going to die, so they shove him into this room, and he falls, and then these big, like, sonic, like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, he got sound blasted or something. Oh, the exploding yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah so they, like, like, <laughs> they, they blow his head up with, like, sonic waves is that the guy that gets blown up and he disappears and there's just nothing left there's just like yeah, two, just pie- two, two pieces of dust probably yeah <laughs> but yeah he he explodes in like a bloody mess i'm like oh my god but what other traps are in the movie like i remember that one and the opening one like, it's like in the between acid that. trap uh yeah i can't I can't recall any other ones <laughs> yeah 
Oh. And we watched this yesterday. Wait, wait. There was a, a <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> there was another version of the kind of wire from the first movie. Uh, the kind of wife. oh yeah, a guy like gets like strung up. Yeah, it's like an old guy, and I think he steps in the room, and all these wires wrap around him, and then they start kind of uh, getting pulled back into the. Yeah, although the thing. it kind of looked more like rope and less like a metal wire, but he gets yeah taken apart. He gets sliced, and it's like a way worse version of what happened in the first movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, then it's revealed that uh, that they're all criminals and that they signed a waiver oh. or did they <laughs> so it's like, well, we'll get, uh, yeah who knows <laughs> so it's like you can either you know be executed or get a shot at surviving we're gonna stick you in this cube uh and then That's apparently bizarre. they all signed waivers yeah it's like, all right, why whatever. did they re- wipe their memories that did they wipe their memories i think so because none yeah of they them, say they can't remember who yeah they none of why would they do anything. that I, I don't know. Yeah, I, you got me. You got me. <laughs> ask, ask the guy with the silver eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and came out the same year as the first Saw. So. True, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Really? Yeah, they missed the forest with the trees for the, the potential of just just have a string of rooms with like fun traps in. And they yeah. got to figure out how to get It's not complicated. It's they really, really not. <laughs> they, got, they hung up on just such strange concepts. Yeah, let's let's go sci-fi with the gravity changing or a hypercube or, yeah, let's go outside of a few layers above the cube and see what it's like. Nah, you, <laughs> you, you are missing the forest for the trees there. Like, it's yeah. so simple. Misunderstood the assignment. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like they read like the IMDb reviews for everyone who was like, "Oh, you never found out like at the what happened at the end." So uh, they're yeah, they're ready to get in. Yeah. yeah, listen to the thirteen-year-olds. Is the yeah yeah the moral yeah the, the saw story. franchise knew knew what it had. You know, they didn't get into like hyper saw or whatever. Oh, yeah. it's still, it's, the second there's one. still time. <laughs> there is still time. <laughs> oh, bring back Tobin Bell again and again and again. Keep it keep it going. Keep it going. We're yeah. on a roll. Bring I heard back. the new one's kind of good. Uh, Alex and I talked about it. We we oh, yeah. it's it is a return to form. We'll right. say that much. Okay, yeah, it's a return sure. to the old stuff. You know what pissed me off in this movie? They said Z instead of Z. Those assholes. Oh, uh, how dare they, they forgot their Canadian roots. And all the actors are Canadian again. I know. So, so why are they pretending like, it's an they, American yeah. movie now? Yeah, no, don't like that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, do we have anything left to say about the g- guy that with the snake eyes and he they he just stands in the room and the room's about to like everything resets and vaporizes for some reason after a certain amount of time? Yeah, so I think somebody they, they reboot the cube. Yeah, they reboot the cube. I think the guy with the silver eye does. And then I think that just incinerates everybody in all the cubes. Uh but they have a certain amount of time where they can get to the exit. I think the the guy who I don't know, worked behind the scenes, kind of enters the cube. He's like kind of a creepy perv, isn't he? Yeah. He just like, you know, falls for this girl that... Yeah, he is a, he is a creepy perv. Maybe not as much as like Quentin in the first movie, but, no. you know, it's just, it's an ongoing theme. Hmm. Yeah. And then we go outside and we get uh, GoldenEye 64 sound effects from the Snake Bruce. <laughs> And that was that was honestly that was when the movie was like starting to get good for me. It was like the last oh, five yeah. minutes. I was like, please, more of this. It was so funny. I was having Especially the time their, of my life. Their POV is really funny too, because it's yes. like this digital POV. Oh, God, and yeah. then you, you see like the bullets <laughs> flying vision. going pew pew. And you see the little like bullets. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah. The reticle moving like all over the screen, just not sticking to the center at all. <laughs> it's funny. Uh so yeah, it's uh uh yeah, the super soldier. What he like? You think he's dead, and then he, he comes back to life. Jumps, jumps up, and like I don't know. He start fighting her what? or something like that. He gets he gets incinerated. They all jump into the water, and then he burns up. And it's like the lamest like yes incineration. <laughs> but, but I think why, that's the one. Why you're did, why can he super jump? Did I, like, I like, how was he able to do that? Snake super eyes. Super soldier. Yeah. Oh, I think they showed in the computer. They're like. uh Moon boots. You know, His moon boots had, or like, something. There was, there was a whole like brain chip angle going on. They like put chips in everyone's brains. In yeah. So they said like blocking pain receptors and like <laughs> initiating like super, super <laughs> jump ability. Put all his XP into his jump ability. <laughs> True. <laughs> all right. What do we uh, give it out of 10? Uh, I'm going to do three. And that's going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. I might Very be like a... Nice. Uh, Four and a half, maybe. The nicest <laughs> that anyone yeah. could possibly. Be. No, I, I, I'm of the opinion uh, these get worse as they go along. I know you guys say oh. you like 
you, you love this one a bit, Hypercube, but no. Nah. <laughs> no, nah, at least that was kind of funny the whole time to me, at least okay, in some yeah. way. It was either funny or entertaining or weird, where this was just like, what? the structure is silly, the the runtime is too long. They just get longer as they go along for some reason, these movies too. Uh. It's like, just keep it 90 minutes. It's like, there's not enough <laughs> meat on the bone. I don't understand why it's called Cube Zero still. I don't understand why they've got Mario Powers. <laughs> it's just sort of like a vague kind of remake of the first movie. Like it's just, just nothing about this one worked for me. Super boring. I want to see more Mario Powers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd prefer that. At least that'd be funny, you know. Yeah. Like, super forgetful. The, for, the fact we couldn't barely even mention like three traps or any of this stuff. Like it, it's again, very it sad. The point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one star, man. It's maybe l less memorable than the fir the l than Hypercube. Yeah, Hypercube has got its moments, at least. I uh, I give this one a one out of ten. <laughs> it's so it's tied with Hypercube. Really? Okay. Yes. Um, I'm. I think I enjoy it slightly more, if only mm -hmm. for the fact that I remembered one or two things about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know like i can't I, I literally hypercube is just like gone from my brain and the whole movie just morphs into itself where it's like cube zero i i remember that there's dudes in a computer thing doing a hack in time and i remember that they go outside and it's golden i-64 as long as i can remember a couple things that elevates it above hypercube so and also i was having the time of my fucking life during the golden eye scene so that, that was great <laughs> Um, well, there's that. But yeah, one out of ten. It's again, f it would feel wrong to give it anything <laughs> higher. <laughs> it would, yeah, it, it would make me feel bad. <laughs> and so that yeah, there was a uh, a remake. Twenty twenty one. This is this is bizarre from Japan, and uh, I watched it for the first time. I guess it was the only one of the Cube films that I hadn't seen before. Is what mm -hmm. I now understand. <laughs> um, when did uh, when when's the last time you guys watched it? Because I, I watch. I just checked my letterbox. I watched it on June twenty fifth. So okay, uh, yeah. So I understand I why you wouldn't want to rewatch it. <laughs> <laughs> it was well, only not that a couple months ago. ago. Yeah. I, I skimmed through it this morning. So I follow Vincenzo Natale on Twitter, and then he was tweeting about it. I didn't Ooh. even know it was was a thing. So he said, "Oh, I'm like really excited. I'm you know a fan of the director." Blah blah blah. Uh, had no idea it, it had even come out. So yeah, and until, until April so watched it. You didn't, wa but you didn't watch it. You just watched like a recap of oh, it on I YouTube just looked, today. <laughs> I skimmed through it. It looked so boring. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine? Oh, you mean it's fine? As in it? it's fine that you didn't watch it. Okay. okay. Yeah, exactly. okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I was, I was getting a bit scared there because like, this was the worst <laughs> one to me. This was like unbearable <laughs> okay <laughs> if, if the, so if i made the, the, I made the right the, choice yeah yeah if the other ones missed the assignment this was this was something else it's a remake right and <laughs> they yeah. didn't even like hit the same beats in the same way like it completely man it just skipped over everything that made that first one good and it's the this same is, story yeah. <laughs> it's, this is just somebody like looking over at his buddy's assignment and then copying it down <laughs> and, like then, it's, and yeah. then missing some important <sighs> the, things the, the thing that my main takeaway of this movie was that it was trying to be a commentary on the generational gap in japan about how yeah. old people hate yeah, young yeah. people young people hate old people and that's really the only thing new that it's bringing to the story. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, it doesn't even get like the stuff that the original gets right with the fun of the traps or the, the different characters. Uh, half of these characters look exactly the same. They have like, the same age. Racist. They have this. Wow. Shut up. They have the same haircut. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they have they have the same haircut. There's an older guy, a younger guy, and a woman. And I clocked that she was a robot halfway through. I was like, either she is the worst actress I've ever seen, or she's a robot. And it's just like, why even have her in the movie? Yeah. It's yeah, like give, give one guess. of the guys a different like, hair color, or something. You know. <laughs> and so I know that sounds bad. <laughs> it sounds bad, but it's true. I I agree with you, but I would say if they had different like or distinct or memorable personalities that would just yeah, do the job that would right? help. it didn't seem like there was a lot of dialogue in this movie it seemed like endless scenes of just people moping around a lot of nothing a lot yeah. of nothing and you don't give a shit um i was pretty much just chatting over the entire film to about nothing to my <laughs> chat in a room where i'm just the only person in this room and i'm just talking to my twitch chat about how dumb the movie is and i i was thinking like in terms of the ratio of like how much 
how much I'm talking versus not talking during a watch along. I think this is maybe the like up there. I think this is maybe like in my top five. <laughs> and like it's in Japanese, so you probably missed some of the dialogue. I watched. I mean, this I was reading passively. the dialogue. Yeah. I watched it pretty passively too. I was. I think I did it in two chunks because I was like, ah, oh, this sucks, and then I turned it off, and then I was like, oh, I guess I'll finish it like later. Yeah, but I was. It, I was yeah. debating building some furniture to to this film. <laughs> it is one of those. It's, it is hard to pay attention. Yeah. yeah. And plus we I was like cramming all these movies. Like I haven't seen any except yeah. for the original. So I'm like mm-hmm. watching, you know, a new cube movie every night and they already start to kind of like blend together. Oh, and yeah. then I'm like, <laughs> oh Christ, am it's I gonna lot. it's a yeah, challenge. Am gonna, yeah, I'm like, am I gonna rewatch, you know, the the first movie basically again in Japanese? It's like, much worse than the first. Oh, much worse. Yeah. Much worse. It is much, much it's worse. It's crazy. Some like it. You're right with the the generational divide thing, but there was another theme going on where like all these characters talking about suicide and attempting suicide. I think there's like two or three suicide attempts, and the whole like villainous character instead of uh, the awesome uh, Quentin from that first movie, mm-hmm. where there's there's some complexity there. He changes as a character from the beginning, and you kind of yeah you follow that journey with him. But here, the, the like lead kind of villainous role is this guy who's kind of a a store clerk mm-hmm. like that's that's, that's 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 his thing you know <laughs> i thought maybe they were going to fill in that character from the first movie you know he's he kind of fibs i'm just working in office but it turned out there was more going on but it was like no i guess the, the lead villain here is just a guy who worked in a shop and he's just talks about how working in a shop is hard and then he, he talks people. about committing suicide and it's like what what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the main, that, and that's the main, all you got yeah, that is all you got. And like this whole fixation on this main character um, who's considers himself responsible for his, I guess, his brother's suicide. Yeah. There's lots of suicide in this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which which they show on a screen. They they have a movie theater in the cube That's now. That's um, funny to me. Yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was I mean, thinking about how, how they probably intended for it to feel. And I was thinking about like, you know, maybe if this was like, if the whole thing was like animated, like the whole movie was like 2D animated or something, or maybe if they were playing with like how they were showing it in terms of a stylistic choice or, you know, an old yeah. boy when he like goes back to the uh, the school and he's mm-hmm. there following himself yes. or whatever, something like that, yes. where you could maybe think it's a memory or not give something too mm-hmm. literal. But as I'm watching this film, I'm thinking like, Okay, we're drones filming him. Like this is yeah. this is a, a shot with a with a very specific depth of field. With like, I'm thinking of it in terms of like the lighting and the lenses. I'm like, this is you you filmed this with a camera, and so I'm and you're watching it on the wall, and it's a movie theater room, and I don't get it. I, the, it char- yeah. the characters so are watching the movie that they're in. Yeah, yeah. there's like editing. Mm. There's cutting back and forth. Yeah, I'm like, there's... who filmed you? <laughs> Yeah, I think it was slow. Doesn't it go slow motion at the end? Yeah, <laughs> the guy's jumping. There's some funny slow motion in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, slow motion blades at the beginning. Just oh a just a weird sentimentality that it has. It like forgot that it was supposed to be a horror movie. Like these people yeah. have just met, and like when when they gradually die one by one, they're like screaming and crying and like <laughs> in yeah. pieces. No. And it's like what? Like why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't earn its emotions at all. There's a lot of very insisted, forced, implied emotions that just don't matter. It's funny that they had, <laughs> they tried to do this weird sort of like thematic uh, parallel to the kid falling just in the door. He's just chilling in between, like in the door zone, and the kid starts falling in slow mo, and the guy's like, "No!" But it then it f- also shows the flashback of the, uh, like I guess his brother or whoever, oh, brother, like falling yeah. off the <laughs> roof, and mm-hmm. it's like, "Well, wait, would this would the kid falling not matter?" If like like <laughs> is, is this supposed to be like well now it now it's really sad that the kid's falling or now it's now it really matters because this is triggering an emotion in his brain it's making him remember about this other time that it was falling and it's just so obvious and then I think about like well okay the kid probably would have just fallen and been fine anyway like what is the tension here what is the tension <laughs> yeah. here he probably just would have fallen and been fine the kid's about to get shot by fucking lasers never happens <laughs> <laughs> the kid's invincible the entire movie they take turns fucking pushing each other out of the way in this manipulative bullshit whole scene where I guess they knew exactly when the laser was going to fire and just managed to 
dodge or push each other out of the way at the exact moment where it was charging up. Fuck. So annoying. There's no like logic to the the, the traps. Or the characters. It, I, I think yeah. out of maybe any movie I've ever seen ever, these are the characters that collectively the entire cast has the slowest reaction time to anything. <laughs> like, to, for them to figure out anything yeah. that's happening. They're in the room where the fan blades are up top. They're all coming down. Like one of them is just deciding to stand. He's he's not gonna crouch. He's like, oh, I'm just so scared that I'm not. Yeah, I can't crouching. Move. There's like people. Nobody looks for a door until somebody yells it out. Like a minute later, like, hey, maybe try opening one of the doors. <laughs> and then even and even once they got that idea, there's the door on the bottom, and the guy has to yell for the other guy to do it. He's like, open the door, and he doesn't do it. And then he has to do it himself. And then even when they get the door open, they have to like grab everybody out of the room who's everybody's just like too frozen and scared to react to anything that's happening right same shit when the gas starts getting released they all just kind of like chill there <laughs> like there's something <laughs> happening leave now two of the characters just like face the wall and they just start coughing and they're like uh, uh, like get out of there get out of there everybody's so stupid that one character is a robot. Uh, to be fair, they are all <laughs> suicidal. They're suicidal, yeah. So maybe they True. just they want to they want to die. And... They, <laughs> no, I feel I I feel like we're prodding at that android thing too casually. Like, no, how is it dumber than Hypercube? Matt, they, <laughs> there's a <laughs> robot character in there, and it's like I guess that's supposed to be the twist, kind of reveal original idea for I, this one. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand the point of that. What does it mean? It's just a reveal at the very very end. Right? I don't it understand the, the purpose. The, the movie was sexist. What? I know. <laughs> Hashtag if, don't trust women. <laughs> yeah. Right? I put an actual female character in there. Yeah. You know? It's a yeah. it's from Japan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's kind of expected. It yeah. It, I, I also don't understand the the animation they do at the end where they show the characters that have died. And then they show their age and occupation in this weird sort of like flashy futuristic cube animation. Yeah, and some of them yeah. it says completed. Yes. Just for, like because they died. Yeah, but and one of their jobs so. just said part time job, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> just <right>. part time <laughs> job? <laughs> one of them just said part time job. <laughs> the main character is shown to survive, even though he's like trapped in that room with the robot spikes that go into like tree the tree spike yeah, yeah i think it's like yes. continued on that one yeah <laughs> it's very it very might just easy. be not well translated also that was yeah they were preparing for so. the sequel i guess on that one I yeah. was disappointed he didn't Mario jump out of the room. True, he just like fell. True. Also, I mean, we we haven't we haven't mentioned how important boots are to this franchise. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh, just wanted course. to mention boots. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't done like you know some merch, some like cube, uh, yeah, cube boots, boots with cube like boots. extra long laces. Yes. <laughs> Anytime you yeah. go into a place, you throw the you throw the boot ahead of you. I just I just find the timing of this so strange. Like it's nearly two decades between this and cube zero it's like why then like if you, what's your angle i don't think it exists to uh try and capitalize off of the name recognition i think it exists just to take an idea that works and make a low budget movie and in all honesty there are ways where you could remake and maybe improve or add new life to the series in ways that don't completely bastardize it or make it terrible. Even mm -hmm. if it's not as good as the first movie, you could make something out of the Cube franchise, the Cube IP, add some new traps, add some new uh, angles to the traps, maybe rethink how you want your characters to discover things or the types of dynamics that can exist or blah, 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 blah. There's a million things you could fucking do. There's no limitation as to what you could put behind one of those doors. We should be seeing mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. maximum amount of creativity from people creating a new Cube film because as we've seen in the second fucking movie, you could just have something where physics doesn't even matter. Like, it's not like you're, <laughs> it's not like you're bastardizing the franchise no matter what you put in the fucking room at this point. You yeah. can do anything. So yeah, why is it that well. a team of people <laughs> that are supposedly supposed to be creative people, why can't they figure out doing something that's interesting? They were like rehashed, reused traps, and then the new ones just looked like shit and were dumb. Gotta we should be seeing some cool Vincenzo. shit. 
Yeah, Vincenzo. Well, I mean, good for him for never doing a sequel, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't need to be a sequel. I wonder like, if he got any like uh, a remake. You know, some residuals from from. I don't know. His name was in like Probably. the special thanks. You'd hope so, right? Yeah. You, you would. You would think so, but I don't know. I mean, you, did the original writers get credit for just no the idea. idea? I don't think so, because it's like you look at like a Friday the Thirteenth movie. It's like does every friday the 13th have to like give money to the people that made the first one i think uh, for the yeah. writer yeah yeah the, the writer, writer yeah. when you create the concept no. that's generally how it works with licensing i think yeah because there was a big like kind of uh, uh to do about the writing in friday the 13th because oh. one of the characters wrote the character jason mm-hmm uh so he was like it was a big court battle and that's what has held up the friday the 13th franchise for so long like they mm. had to like cancel the video game oh. i think or oh, something yeah. like that because uh, one guy was like i wrote the character jason so therefore you know blah blah, blah. that's why i think jason x was a thing which i worked on by the way nice. um couldn't have couldn't be a friday the 13th movie it had right. to be called jason x oh wow and, oh yeah blah, blah, yeah blah. There's all these like rules and whatever. Who came yeah. up with? What? I thought that this film, as soon as it opened up. By the way, Alex, I want to. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have to ask you this before I forget. Did mm. you recognize the guy from the first trap in the opening death scene? Yeah, Perfect Days. Yes, <laughs> he yeah. was the guy from Perfect yeah. Days who kept writing, oh. writing things out of ten. <laughs> yeah, that was okay. The the first opening death scene. It wasn't so bad. The chest. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. It needed more blood, though. It's like that cube kind of came out of his chest, and it was like a big yeah. cube of jelly also, or something. Yeah, or so his clothes needed to be affected more when it was like it, it didn't look right when the big uh, pillow. It was odd. Yeah, it was just sort of solid of meat, but you'd have like yeah. organs and yeah, bone. Yeah, it would and, be messier. Like you're just a big. It's like an open cavity inside of you. It's not just solid meat. A solid block. <laughs> it was <laughs> not good, but it was the best part of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It seemed yeah. like the movie yeah, might be fine from that moment and then quickly it started deteriorating yeah. and i think that i think the the moment where i started realizing this is a gigantic piece of shit was <laughs> not just after the bad acting but after the first really long sequence of the most confusing fucking music when the woman shows up <laughs> i guess robot <laughs> when she shows up and she's just staring through the door and the music is doing this like crazy fucking like anime what's going on like i don't know how to describe it like the tone was all over the place and the scene went on for so long and nothing was happening i was like what are you trying to communicate here and i realized it was a hilarious dumb piece of shit yeah no i figured it was going to be more just a one-to-one kind of remake hitting the same beats because that's what that's why i'd heard about it that it was just like boring for that reason but it's no it's boring for a different reason it's like it it would be kind of fine and watchable if that's all it did was just mm-hmm. try and modernize it but no it, it does completely miss the point in worse ways than Cube Two, Hypercube, and Cube Zero, like it's wow, it's even yeah. more boring than them to me. Like I, Be- I would, being bland is a worse crime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially when you do have the exact comparison, and you are a remake, and you're basically retelling that story that's already been told. It's like what mm-hmm. the blueprint is there, and it's how does embarrassing, it look worse? Yeah. How does it look worse? Like over yeah, it two did. It did later? look worse. <laughs> Like the cube itself looks worse than than the first one. Yeah, I was kind of uh, disappointed because at you know at the beginning, not only did they have a a trap and a death that just seemed fine, but also the cinematography in that opening scene was also fine. Like there was a long shot going throughout the length of the cube, and then quickly after that point, throughout the rest of the movie, all the shots are just so tightly framed and so weirdly close in a way where I'm like, what the hell? Where did, where did the cinematography go? Like, are you in a yeah. different set now? Like what's, what's going on? Like that was bizarre. Absolutely. Second bizarre. unit, second unit director. I probably. guess maybe <laughs> did that opening. Show. Yeah. Or they probably had, yeah, they didn't have the opening shot. And they're oh, like, yeah. we need something to spice it up. Maybe they did it later. The color of the room changed like a mood ring. Yeah, it did. That yes. Was weird. Yeah, because they they have those like LED light panels we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. They can change it on Do a whatever. Whim. Yeah. But what did that add to anything? Did that make nope. it better? Like no. what, the, what what for what purpose? Uh, they were just showing off. They had some like kind of animated lights going like Yeah. Ooh. Whatever. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> now look at them in the audience. <laughs> yeah. Into the theaters. Yeah, I was very um I was very checked out progressively as this film went on and i yeah. felt no guilt or shame whatsoever in just kind of talking over it now i feel much much better for having not watched it oh, <laughs> just yeah, you, you made the correct through. choice yeah. yeah oh thank god it's fine, i yeah. just couldn't do it it was just too much cubes i don't want to see cubes ever again <laughs> for another while 
I need a rhombus. Unless they're in I my glass. I need a dodecahedron. Mm. And made of ice. <laughs> Even a triangle would do. Pyramid. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they start out. Hyper pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty, like, I don't have anything more to say about this shit. Oh, fuck it. There's nothing to say. Yeah, there's, no. there's nothing on this one. Yeah, very bland. I would probably give it the lowest rating because, um, while it had kind of uh, the, the potential to be better than those other two sequels, it just, mm-hmm. it just fails. Uh, and so it is probably the worst of the, of the sequels. So I give it a one. Wow. Okay. Well, I don't know. I didn't really watch it, so I don't, I, I can't give it a rating. <laughs> do it. Do what I do. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you don't want to you know, welcome that that, oh, that attention. The internet will tear me apart. Yeah, no, no um, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. It's If it's not even <laughs> worth, if it's not even worth watching, then, you know, I can't, I can't even rate it. So just whatever. One zero. <laughs> zero. We got it. We got uh, it. You said the yeah. number. You're canceled. That's going right in my <laughs> letterbox. Zero. Yeah, I'm right there. Half half star. One out of ten. Just yeah, completely, completely misses the point. Don't even bother with this one. The other ones have at least something to talk about. There's just nothing here. I give this one a two. I give this one a two out of ten. I th- I think it's slightly uh, better than the last two films. Uh. You don't want to pay attention to it, you know. It's best. It's best experienced by not watching it. But at the same time, I feel like it was a bit more. You know, it actually looked like a movie at points, <laughs> not like a television show. <laughs> there was more of a higher production. Yeah, uh, there was level. there was I'll some competent things there, barely. Which I, I mean, the, the the previous two films are like so astronomically bad. I don't often give things one out of ten. Like it's not something I just do and hand out <laughs> like candy. <laughs> That's fun though. At least this was so long, an hour forty-eight. Come on, yeah, it does oh, not need fine. to be that long. Ninety no. minutes. That's that sweet no. spot. Yeah, it's yeah. embarrassing. It's bad, but it's somehow somehow the other ones were still worse. So yeah, two <laughs> out of ten for me. But we're not. Wow. We're splitting hairs here. It's they're they're all terrible. They're all just so awful. Why did we do this? <laughs> Why did we do why this? Did, why did we do this? We're cubing here. Hey, bro! Uh, <laughs> hey, it wasn't my idea to watch all the sequels. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was. No, it was Adam's. It, oh. it was my idea. Oh, way to go. God damn. Well, it was because like episode 150, I'm like, mm, yeah, yeah, we got to do a big Halloween. No, I'm glad I've seen Hypercube. <laughs> Like uh, you guys, like you hate Hypercube, but I don't know. I'm I'm loving it more and more the more I'm thinking about. It. Alex, you have a history of just liking things with silly names. Okay, I see your fucking bias. Okay. <laughs> Bahubali. That does that does, that, that I mean, does play a small role. A small one. <laughs> yeah, I see through you. Okay, I see your shit. I'm on to you. <laughs> oh, I feel like my eyes are cubes. <laughs> I'm, I'm cubed out. I gotta tell you guys, I'm cubed out. Right yeah, now. after four cube movies, <laughs> although I didn't, I didn't rewatch 2021. It's it's a lot. Good, in one, yeah. one week. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of cube. I don't want to see flat walls anywhere. I don't know. I just I have this instinct just to defend hypercube. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I had that stabby guy. Uh, yeah, like I mean, I am looking back on it slightly more fondly just because it's funny but when we were watching it I was just angry <laughs> <laughs> I did like the guy getting shredded up by the, the spinning hypercube yeah, yeah, yeah of course I very much did not like that <laughs> <laughs> one out of ten <laughs> okay uh, let's do some questions from the Sir Donacast community if you want to leave your own questions for future episodes head over to the suggestion thread on the subreddit just like Johnny Stevie did. There was a question for Colin. Oh, what's your favorite VFX shot you've ever worked on? Also, how has the VFX industry evolved since your early days? Oh, um, favorite VFX shot. I think probably the work that I did on the cell. That was a, a movie by Tarsim Singh, um, Jennifer Lopez, Vince Vaughn. Uh, I kind of did this sequence on my own. That, that's something that I was the most proud of, I think. It's when she falls through the air into the Roman pantheon. She kind of falls through and then floats down wearing like this red dress. It's a very iconic mm. 
uh, scene. They even showed it at the Oscars one time. There was Ooh. like, they had oh, that nice. year, that year they had, uh, <laughs> it was like Cirque du Soleil was doing like a performance in front of the screen mm. uh, on, on the stage at the Oscars. And then they had, wow. they had my shot where she f- falls through the ceiling and then one of the Cirque du Soleil performers was wearing like a big red flowing dress. And I was like, oh, yeah, there we go. That's awesome. That is dope. I, I yeah. made it, man. How has the industry changed? Industry has changed. Oh, God. And in some ways for the better. Like when, when I was coming up, it was, you know, early 90s. So it was like, you know, CG was just sort of getting started at that time. Um, uh, every, you know, just super excited. You didn't get overtime or anything you know, didn't get overtime pay, but worked crazy hours just because you wanted to, uh, and you kind of loved it. Now it's just sort of, it feels very, uh, exploitative. I think at this point, Mm. um, people do usually get paid overtime now. So, but it's just, I I, I don't know. It's just something that I'm, I've been working in commercials, I think for the past 10 years or so. And I briefly got back into kind of long form TV, uh, TV visual effects and, uh, I'm happy I'm back in commercials now. Let's just say that. It's just, mm. uh, it was not fun. It was just, mm-hmm. I don't know. It all kind of felt gross. And now it's like all these companies are starting up, uh, you know, divisions in India so they can kind of exploit, you know, Indian employees. Cheaper labor. Like ro- exactly, yeah. yeah. Just doing grunt work like, you know, rotos and stuff like that. Uh, so it's just, I don't know. It's it's kind of a good time to to move on, I think, from from film and TV stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh, but on a similar line, uh, more of a question we can all answer here from BR Solo One Two One: What is an underappreciated slash underrated visual effect, digital or practical, that really impressed you? Um, hmm. My mind, I don't know why this lingers in my mind because it's such a like forgettable movie to me but towards the end of that film ender's game there's like this cg bug that mm. i don't know it just like blew my mind at the time 2013 I remember the textures on it looking crazy i was like oh we're, we're like so close to that just photorealism um mm-hmm. but I just yeah i wish it could have been a more memorable film i have seen that movie but i don't remember the specific look of the bug <laughs> <laughs> it's a very uh, uh yes. slow boring film very boring um, I can think of one. There was a very underwatched series on um, Netflix called Smash, Saturday Morning All Star Hits. Um, it's really funny. It's basically it's kind of like kind of like VHS, where you're supposed to be watching like an old VHS tape, but there's mm. like these TV hosts introducing these cartoons, but they're like fake cartoons that they did for the show. But uh, it stars Kyle Mooney and he plays twins and he's just, they're just like going back and forth, like doing these like, you know, taped segments, but it, it, it is almost impossible to tell that he, that he's just one person. It's done uh-huh. so well. And it's like the camera is moving around in that kind of like 90s style and like zooming in and like back and forth. And they just did it with a motion controlled camera, but it's wow. seamless. Like it is so good. Like like I said, if you didn't know that he wasn't twins, you would think that he that he was. It's mm. it, I, I, and that's a very funny show, by the way. I highly recommend it. Uh, so that's my answer. Uh, this is like early kind of CGI days, but there's a movie called I think it was Stephen Summers' first movie called Deep Rising uh, with Treat Williams, Famke Jansen. Uh, it's a blast. It's a really really fun gory movie. Uh, there's a scene. It's like they they go onto some like ship to kind of rob it. And then uh, uh, they find out everyone's dead. And it's like the sea monster has, has gotten on board. And then there's a scene where like somebody's swallowed by the sea monster and it kind of regurgitates him later on in the movie. And he's sort of half dissolved by the mm-hmm. stomach acid and he's still alive. Uh, and it's, it's sort of mind blowing how good it is. Uh, and it's so disturbing to look at, but in that was like early days of CGI and it's still kind of, uh, really, really effective. Okay. Cool. Uh, I guess b- based on the phrasing of that uh, question, um, Neville Dean and Taylor do some things practically when they used to work together uh, that people 
just didn't recognize were practical and it always kind of fucking pissed me off. <laughs> um, <laughs> like at the end of Crank, they, they're literally like flying in a helicopter. <laughs> like <laughs> like he's, he's literally hanging out of a helicopter. Um, and I love the sense of style that they have with the camera work and just how the directors are like really in there and like up close. And they're, they're very much a part of the stunt team. Um, the director's like, on rollerblades hitching behind a oh, fucking yeah. motorcycle just to get the shot and um even in even in their like worst received movies like uh Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance there's a shot where um a character you know f- flies off of a car basically and the camera follows them and like essentially they're like flying off a cliff Oh you yeah, look at the, yeah, yeah. Like the behind-the-scenes yeah, yeah, footage, yeah. you can see, like, yeah, that's the director holding the camera, basically being shot over a cliff with some safety <laughs> equipment. Like, <laughs> he's got like a harness. On yeah, that. there's a lot of shit that they were doing that was never really fully appreciated because people just have an expectation of uh, the laziness of how movies are made, and so they don't see. You know, when a shot <laughs> looks like that, they just think like, oh, it was in front of a green screen. He just flew in front of a yeah. green screen or something like that. But no, like they're fl- fucking, you know, they're doing some crazy shit and just kind of went unappreciated, which is sad. But yeah, I feel like we've lost a lot of that, like the kind of marvel of watching something really cool. You know what I mean? Everything yeah. is mm-hmm. just sort of like hand waved now, like, eh. It's like CG or effects or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because like, you'd think it. if you were to ask me, 10 plus years ago what movies would look like in 2023 mm-hmm. I would have thought that we'd be at the point where CG is just like a seamless <laughs> thing yeah, that you can't yeah. tell the yeah, difference right. between um, mm-hmm. and depending on how it's used it is uh, yeah, depending I mean, can, on what kind of texture um, there's so many visual effects shots if you look at the uh, visual effects reel for something like The Wolf of Wall Street a movie where you wouldn't yeah. think yeah. That there's a bunch of CG or compositing or, you know, replace backgrounds or, you know, elements that are entirely CG. Uh, but mm-hmm. there is. There are. And you can find this on YouTube or Vimeo. I forget where. But look up the visual effects reel for The Wolf of Wall Street and you'll see the movie in an entirely different light. You'll be like, oh, wow. Like, actually, there's a shit ton of visual effects shots here. Mm-hmm. And I think it's funny and kind of sad at the same time that those are never nominated for Oscars. And every single time it's the Oscar nomination for visual effects, it's what are the most obvious visual effects? What's the movie that had the most obvious visual effects? The most. Or or just the most effects. Yeah, like what... (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's incredible when you can't tell that they were there. That's Mm -hmm. that's an an art in of itself is not being being able to tell that it's a visual effect and thinking that it's real, right? Like, is that not the goal for many films? So, you know, well, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think we've like we've reached that point and have been there for a very long time, but it's just the way that the studios, you know, especially the Marvel movies, yes. how they just run the productions where they're constantly changing their mind as, the, you know, mm-hmm. during post-production and, you know, changing characters, costumes and all this sort of stuff mm-hmm. right up to the last minute. So, you know, a lot of the stuff that just, it just ends up looking like just trash. I mean, you see that trailer for like the Marvels or whatever. Oh my yeah. God. It just looks so cheap and awful. And it's like, you look at the budget is like $300 million. And then you look at the creator, which was like 80 million and it's mm-hmm. just impeccable. Like everything is just so well done. Uh, yeah. You know, it's just yeah. like ex, ex machina kind mm-hmm. of level, but you know, on a much grander scale. So it, it all comes down to just, knowing what you want ahead of time and planning for it and not just like making it up as you go and practicality constantly. exactly yeah it's a tool at the end of the day you know it can so easily just be abused like and used as a cheat code for like your meg twos the trench or whatever you know like, <laughs> yeah. well, we don't even really need to conceptualize anything just <laughs> yeah you'll be hating on my yeah. meg to the trench <laughs> Jason Statham's going to come out, you know? What'd you say? <laughs> oh, bringing out the British accent again. I like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Your blood um, is like just boiling right now. <laughs> this one uh, from Vince is depressed is interesting. This is some pretty recent news that's just come out. When you start recording this episode, A24 announced they'll be looking into starting to make 
more IP films and action films to return a profit after spending so much and losing more money than earning? Do you think this will ruin the company or a sign they are just the next big player in town? Honestly, if we get cool, low, or mid-budget action films from them, as well as their dramas and horror, I'd be happy. As they already had one action movie, might as well embrace it as it is profitable. As for IP, they are Friday the 13th and want Halloween. It could work. Just be weird with the decision to acquire and milk it. Uh, I just want to point out that the reporting around that is kind of it's kind of been misleading so there's uh, a lot of people will be sharing what are essentially opinion pieces that throw in uh oh. things like bo is afraid when that is not at all mentioned uh in in by anybody from a24 as a part of their business decision to do that and a lot of this is speculative because i don't even know if a24 came out and said that's what they're doing um but this the the, the real news is essentially that they got like a what 2.5 billion dollar evaluation by uh some like new investment firm or something and so people are speculating that in order for them to live up to that new uh evaluation of a company right. that they would have to uh be taking on some larger ips and they might and they, it seems like they would i believe that they were in a bidding war uh for a franchise it might have been halloween but they lost to another company like MGM might have paid more. I don't remember, but mm -hmm. essentially that's what's happening. A lot of people are just repeating opinion pieces as if they're fact oh, okay. and it's not really like, I mean, yeah. either way, I guess to answer that question, sure. It depends on what they do with it. I, I could see them doing a, a fine job with tackling a trilogy uh, as long as they stay true to their roots and their values as a company and make sure to uh work with creatives and allow them to have control over a project. I'm hoping that nobody involved with Bo is afraid was expecting it to make its money back. That's my, that's my hope. They'd have uh, to be insane. Yeah. <laughs> they would have to be. So insane. otherwise, <laughs> I mean, they're pretty good business wise. So yeah. I mean, I saw that headline and I, I was just like, you know, skimming past it on Twitter. And I, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was like an onion headline and I just moved on. Like I, didn't even mm -hmm. think about it. So I didn't think it was it was real. I mean, I don't want to see A24 do, do IP movies, but if 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 no. someone has to, I guess, but like maybe they could have like a spin-off label or something like, you know. Do we need more Halloween? <laughs> A25. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Um, if they're going to do like more genre movies, then I would obviously love that because I like genre movies and I would be interested to see. Yeah. But like you know, they have this reputation and uh, if they, I think people are worried they're going to like ruin that reputation Sully it or something. Yeah, But I mean, yeah. every studio is going to make good and bad movies. They're not just going to have the best track record. But mm -hmm. I know at that, this point, like people will see oh, a 24, I'll go see it, you know, and that's it's an good. interesting brand. Yeah. 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 You, you know, the, the type of movie you're going to, for the yes. most part, I think for the that most part, if you go to their website and you look up like, every film that they've ever distributed or produced, mm -hmm. you'll understand that there's not only a bunch of duds in there, but not everything adheres to this same, you know, genre or expectation of what an A424 movie is. Um, but it, still, that doesn't stop people from having certain expectations or uh, recognizing that, I guess, most interesting horror movies that have come out in the past decade have been <laughs> A24 related. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah. When I yeah. see the logo, you kind of like perk up like, ooh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. might be this is this is worth watching. Um, so, yeah, you just keep you have like a, a little spinoff label that you do for like the ip stuff like the you know dimension b24 films. well yeah. he said a26 but there you go b24 um yeah if they keep those budgets under control yeah dimension films that was like a spin-off for all yeah. the schlocky stuff that a24 hypercube <laughs> yeah that, that'd be yes. great yeah okay I'm, oh, yeah. Hyper, yeah. hypercube films i love that <laughs> yeah that's the way to do it so then, yeah, you keep the keep the A twenty four name for like the prestige stuff or whatever mm -hmm. the classier the classier stuff. I got to throw the uh, the weebs a bone here. Uh oh, we're always getting these questions. <laughs> uh, the stuff, but come on, let's give this one to J ten eighty seven. What's everyone's personal favorite anime series, not film? They specify. <laughs> 
Uh, well, um, I mean, I grew up watching Sailor Moon. It's a big, big influence. Of, we have a giant poster of Sailor Moon beside Yee. us right now. Um, oh, yeah. But I mean, as a series, it's a very, it's a monster of the week episodic show geared, you know, to kids and teens. So, you know, rewatching it, it's not as fun as the more like serialized shows that, you know, I got into much, much later in life. I really like Steins Gate. That's a good uh, sci-fi. I've watched Shiro Bako twice. That's the anime about making anime. It's like a workplace anime. Interesting. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's so really fun. cool. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to consult the list. Hang oh, my on. God. I have a list on my phone. Every time I walk by the TV, April's watching a new anime. Uh, actually, I, I haven't <laughs> What's watched this one about? many uh, in, watched, a, in a while. There was like the volleyball one. There was the one about Ooh, camping. Oh, the volleyball one. That's great. Yuri on Ice. Yuri on yeah. Ice also I loved. Um, Dora Hadoro was really fun. That's on Netflix. It's like about a guy who has a, a dinosaur head. That's a really <laughs> fun, like hyper-violent kind of sci-fi world but there's also magic obviously death note i liked but i mean that's kind of like the boring i don't care if it's the boring answer that's my favorite (laughs) anime i love it there's so much i I love revisiting it all the time yeah i've rewatched that i think once or like one and a half times because colin was watching it and Mm -hmm. then you never finished it so we should we should i need to finish finish it yeah yeah you got about halfway through uh so yeah i I don't really watch anime Uh, other than you know walking by the tv and seeing what april's watching i I don't really so that's probably the only one that i kind of like sat through which i really have to finish we watched that cyberpunk one although we didn't we didn't finish that we we, i think got got almost all the way to the end that was pretty good actually yeah it wasn't bad yeah yeah i like that edge uh, the edge runners i think edge runners yeah yeah that was pretty cool yeah 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 that was solid i wouldn't say it's my favorite um mine would be like just an expected I don't know, Cowboy Bebop. I don't have the biggest range of anime under my belt, but it's because of the corgi. Kind of the obvious one. <laughs> oh yeah, kind of. Inter- Crazily, that was more of an introduction to corgis than like the royal family was to me. <laughs> like I'd never really thought about them before, <laughs> so it's kind of a weird backward way to yeah. <laughs> be introduced oh, man. to that. But that's funny. Yeah, I, I still listen to that soundtrack to this day. So, mm-hmm. do you guys know about this? Cra- I, I heard something about this crazy anime. I was just trying to find it right now. Where like the plot was about. I think it's this one. Oshinoko. You guys heard of this? Mm, not by name. Um, this, this character is tasked with helping deliver the child of Hoshino, a famous pop idol whom he ha- admires w- without the knowledge of the general public. However, the night of the delivery, the doctor is murdered by an obsessed fan and is reincarnated as the baby. <laughs> so then they... Like, but the baby no. still has the memories of the, <laughs> the doctor. <laughs> the doctor. No, so I have so not like... <laughs> heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of thing that I don't know. This is why I love every... anime. Sometimes. Nothing ever yeah, surprises exactly. me when I find out what animes are about. <laughs> like, okay, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> Dinosaur head this, reincarnated. your yearly anime bone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do all this one from Slow Magenta. As you've matured slash learned more about film, how has your opinion or standards changed on what makes a movie truly horrifying slash scary? Can a movie be scary in a good way and bad from a filmmaking perspective? I think like if it's scary, it needs to have good filmmaking. I kind of think that like uh, there's kind of like I love horror movies. There's kind of two kinds, though. There's the kind that are... um, you know, more of the B movie side, which are, you know, funny. They're definitely not scary. Something like Slumber Party Massacre 2, for instance. There's, you know, if there's, if there's fun kills, I love that. Or like the new Evil Dead. Like to me, that was just like a lot of yeah. fun, but it wasn't scary at all. Yeah. I'm and then I, I think that the movies that have much better f- filmmaking that are actually scary or something like, I don't know, like the night house is like a good example. Like I thought that was like really creepy. Hereditary. Yeah. Like super creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh yeah so i i think that there's two kind of for me just just like the there's kind two of schlocky, directions it can go and yeah. they're both equally f- they're fun for me mm-hmm. what isn't scary cgi monsters in your movie yeah that are, that are running around yeah. in, in like a horror movie it's just like no i uh, yeah i it. i don't know if i can think of an example of something that scares me that isn't well filmed in some way right i think that that might be necessary but i i would maybe uh unless it's unintentionally scary Mm -hmm. although like when i saw the blair witch project in the theaters and that came out that scared the bejesus out of me but that is well filmed 
well, you know, it's a, it's, it's well, it's put a style. Together. Yeah, it's definitely you know? a style for sure. Is it like it's smart in how it's constructed in the same way that Cube is? It understood its limitations and decided to make something based on what they could do, and they pulled it off. Yeah, I think so. But when you're talking about like I don't know the sort of technical aspects of like. I don't know what makes something like well shot. Sure, it's like it's, you know, kind of aping the sort of like VHS style or found footage, whatever. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Would I cons yeah. would I consider that well shot? No, but it suits the style, I guess. Sometimes when a horror movie leans more into like psychological concepts, that can that goes a long way for yeah. me. Um, mm -hmm. and carries yeah. a lot of the horror which uh, as I've gotten older I kind of appreciate more that's what gets me more about like uh, the no martyrs or something like that where a lot of the horror is kind of implied or uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah the places it makes your mind go is the uh, but I suppose that is good filmmaking in a way like what you're implying what you're not showing um, so yeah it's difficult yeah. to think of something that doesn't do both at the same time yeah Even like, like David Lynch type stuff where it's more mm -hmm. to sort of heady and creepy it's just about the tone and and the vibe that you're getting from the movie like from the sound yeah. atmosphere uh, yeah just the yeah. atmosphere is just uh, does a lot for me send on this one from 100 100 wyatt do you think there's an issue of criticizing comedy in movies where people just say it isn't funny and that's it i see this pretty often from every reviewer and i'd rather people explain why something isn't funny to them than what they do to make it funnier I suppose it's a bit like horror in a way, where uh, hmm. you know, some people do find things scary. I mean, some people find things funny. It's, sub it's very subjective. Comedy is very subjective. I feel like in some ways I can articulate why I don't find something funny. So, like in a Friedberg Seltzer movie, I would argue <laughs> just referencing pop culture. Just the the mm. joke shouldn't just be, "Hey, I recognize that that's a thing." Mm -hmm. Right. There should yeah. be more to it. And maybe you can use that as part of a joke. But otherwise, the, I don't find that funny. And maybe to some people, they do find it funny. I mean, of course, some people do find it like we know that literally just pop culture references in of itself mm -hmm. in of themselves are funny to some yeah. people. But at least I can ar articulate why I don't find that funny. But you're right. It, humor is very subjective. And you might as well be saying, you know, either I don't find that funny or like I don't find that sexually attractive. It's it's as subjective as that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you don't find something funny in a movie, I think you should also be able to maybe critique the filmmaking and be like, okay, well, True. I didn't laugh, but at least it had you know good this this and that, or it yeah. did, or it didn't. You know, it shouldn't yeah. just be like I didn't personally find it funny, therefore mm -hmm. it's yeah. terrible. You know, but those those types of movies, the ones you were talking about, Selt was it Seltzer and Friedberg or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody must find them funny because. They've made, made so I don't know, God knows Ten how many. Billion. I know. Yes. And I mean, <laughs> they're they're millionaires, those people. We were talking about this on a recent podcast mm -hmm. where it's like, the, you know, the, the Zaz movies mm -hmm. where there's, there's, there are spoofing movies and TV shows, but it's not the whole joke. The joke is yeah. actually separated from that. It's not just we're doing a scene from The Matrix, therefore that's funny. Yeah. Um, it ha mm -hmm. There's another layer of humor on yeah. top of that. And and stuff like that, when you're referencing a very specific pop culture thing, like The Matrix or whatever, they'll just date your film. And it, yeah. it's something that yeah. I don't really, that doesn't mm -hmm. really happen with like Airplane or Top Secret or Naked Gun. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a kind of timeless quality to those where it's like those date movies or superhero movies, whatever yeah. the hell. And also, like a, something something like Nirvana, the band, the show is filled with mm -hmm. like '90s references, mm -hmm. um, and that's a part of the style. It's it also matters how it's worked into the plot. For sure, it matters how it's worked into what you're doing, and it also matters how it's presented in terms of how egregiously obvious it is or how subtle it is uh you know if, if it if you can still get some sense of satisfaction out of recognizing something especially you know if it's nostalgic um yeah but if it's literally i mean the friedberg and seltzer things were just like haha this is paris hilton 
Yeah. And that's, that's it. The and there's no satisfaction all the comedy in it. Yeah. There's nothing else going on. It's you have like, to have yeah, like a character well a that's away. like the family guy thing. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a character. Like Seinfeld did movie references all the time, but they're like putting their characters into these scenes and and um And they also tie situations. into they tie into the bigger episode exactly. as well. Yeah. Where it feels like a kind of natural thing where it's yeah. not just sort of cutting, you know, reference. It, here's random just reference. A, just yeah. a scene from a movie with the, those exact characters. Mm-hmm. Like that's not funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think of like uh, the BBC comedy, the thick of it. Uh, the character, oh, yeah. the Peter Capaldi character, he's whipping out references left and right, but there's it contextualizes something within the scene or adds like a yeah something funny within that moment. It, but it's not like the core of the humor. Like yeah. there's still so yeah. much else it's surrounding just, it. It's just a on. little bit of seasoning. It's mm-hmm. not the main course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. Cool. I guess. I guess that's it. I guess we I did that's it. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Fine. That was Beefy hyper. Episode. That was hyper awesome. Thank you for staying so long. Also, mm. thank you for making this one epic hypercube of an episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, episode yes. one hundred and fifty <laughs> Halloween. Everything just worked out perfectly. Um, and uh, yeah, before I do like all the you know podcast outro stuff. Where can people find you? You want to plug some stuff? What link should we include in our uh, description and everything? Uh, well, you can find us uh, where podcasts are found. Uh, so we're on <laughs> Apple, Podca- Apple Podcasts, <laughs> Spotify, Google Play Music. Um, and we have a YouTube channel as well where we just post uh, you know, the audio uploads of, of, our, of our podcast. Uh, once again, it's called No Such Thing as a Bad Movie. And uh, we're on Twitter, uh, Blue Sky, and Instagram at No Such Thing Pod. And uh, if you'd like to support us on Patreon, we're on patreon.com slash no such thing as a bad movie. And uh, we uh, mentioned earlier that uh, if you're on the $2 level and up, we can be submitted to pick a movie for a future episode. And if you're on the $5 level, we record a little bonus episode every two weeks. So our podcast is biweekly. And then on the off week, we record an episode where we talk about n- uh, newer movies that are coming out and things that we're watching. Uh, and Yeah. Uh, should I plug my own uh, socials as well? Do it. <laughs> yeah, go you, for can, it. you can also find me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Blue Sky at April Admansky. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Sergeant Zima, S G T Z I M A. Z. What's a Z? Z Z I M A Z I M A. Make me feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> I think the same on Instagram, but whatever. He doesn't know his own Instagram. I, uh, it might be the same. All right. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know. I just post cat, cat pictures on Instagram, so there you go. Of course. And I guess it's my turn to recommend a film for the first time yeah. in what feels like forever because we had It does feel two, like a long time. We had uh, two guest episodes in a row and one before that you recommended, and I don't even remember what happened before that, but it feels like it's been forever. Uh, yes. I, was, I was struggling here. I was like, fuck, what do we... Oh, by the way, before I recommend it, Alex... Do you know if you're... Is Killers of the Flower Moon coming out for you soon? I'm seeing it next week, I You think. got your tickets? Okay, so we yeah, will be talking ticket. about that in ticket. the next episode, too. Good. Um, I'm going to recommend uh, something to help the overall title, something with a shorter title. <laughs> Birth by Jonathan Glazer. Oh, I haven't yeah. seen it. Cool. Haven't seen it. It's the yeah, only one of his that that's, I haven't that's seen. That's the one. Good. I thought you Nicole hadn't seen Kidman? it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, my love for Mr. Glazer has increased with every film I've seen and this is the only mm-hmm. one I haven't and so I'm just I'm very excited to check it out even if it's not his best I'm sure it'll at least be interesting so if you don't want to get spoiled yeah. for birth Nicole uh, Kidman directed by Jonathan Glazer came out 2004 if you don't want to be spoiled for it watch it before the next episode these episodes come out every two weeks you can support the show by going to sardonicast.com, signing up for premium. It's only $2 a month. You'll hear these earlier as they're edited. And also, patreon.com slash sardonicast will do you the same thing. It will get you the same thing at the same price. We also got merch. Uh, link in the description. That design is going to disappear. We're going to have new designs at some point. We're very busy. I know we keep talking about these things. Also, we're going to start doing you know, ad reads and shit. We will. Don't think I didn't warn you. You want to get on the premium and the Patreon if you don't want to hear ads, okay? Uh, so do that and feel good about yourself, please. Please, it's almost Christmas. Buy me a Patreon, $2. <laughs> yeah. Okay, think about me. 
<laughs> okay. Um, did I forget anything? Oh, yeah. Sardonicast Highlights channel on YouTube. You can subscribe to that. Hit the bell. Hit the bell on the regular channel as well. And uh, I believe that's it. Thank you so much for joining. That was awesome. That was a lot of fun. Always great talking to you. Um, yeah, thanks for having thank us you on. For yeah, having us. Awesome. It, was so, a, it was a lot of fun. Have a happy hypercube and a merry new thousandth <laughs> planet. Happy hypercube. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs>